I'm gonna be perfectly honest with you guys. My brain is running on so many different things right now because of the hype from like the um Hololive Fest and like the new Hollow Stories news and like I woke up like an hour before a stream and luckily my stomach is okay, but now my brain is all over the place and that's we're just gonna carry that energy into the stream. But holy fuck Yeah, so much stuff is happening right now. Also, I know like, most people don't usually do this, but since today is a special case, feel free to drop any news related to, like, Hollow Life Fest and Hollow Stars in chat. Like, I know, like, the, most people, like, most of the time, even I'm just like, yeah, don't, like, put, like, super big news in chat, because I'll, like, look at it in my own. But today is a special case, so feel free to just drop whatever you want in today's chat, like... If something big happens, like, oh my god, oh, I, and of course I'm gonna fangirl about, like, the new Hollow Stars, and also, like, there's, like, IRL outfit, like, like cosplays of all the, like, current Hollow Star Boy stuff, and they recreated, like, the, um, hideout from Stars Collection, yes, they did recreate the shitty fridge, and I love that so fucking much, oh my goodness, so, yeah, but, anyway, I'm gonna do the initial purpose of the stream first, and then we're gonna get to all the Hollow Stars fangirling, <laughs> which I am very good at. But I'm also very good at rhythm game fangirling, and my favorite rhythm game is Beat Mania 2DX, and holy fuck, I love it so much. Like, it's so, like, they release a new version every year. Like, when it began, they used to release, like, two or three versions every year, which I still can't imagine. And, like, in the early games, yeah, they kind of reused the same assets and things like that, but... As, like, the game progressed more and more, like, each version had its own theme. And to start that out, I literally I have a whole playlist of, like, the background animations and, like, um, interface stuff. Like, I said, like, they literally, like, every version has a different theme. And, like, even the interface of, like, you choosing, like, what mode you want to play, like, what songs you want to play, it changes each game. Like, they put so much care into, like, the way the game looks and feels each version and i absolutely love that about the game and that just makes it even more cool so i think a very good way to start the stream out is by looking back at some of like the title screen intros and stuff and it'll give you an idea of like where the fuck beat mania 2dx likes to go sometimes so let me make sure why so this is literally from the very first beat mania 2dx and again beat mania well i haven't said this yet but beat mania 2dx let me turn that down a bit is a continuation of the game Beat Mania, just like the word Beat Mania by itself. And like, it's called 2DX because it has two extra keys, because Beat Mania had five keys in the turntable. 2DX means like the two extra keys, and then, which make, gives, puts it up to seven keys, and then DX means deluxe. So that's where the title Beat Mania 2DX comes from. And yeah, as you can tell, like the first version, like Substream was like, again, new songs. But once you start to get it in the third style, we like started adding more and more stuff and yeah this is from 2000 like i'm basically almost as old as i think beat mania i think it did start in 97 and i was born in 96 so i'm technically one year older than the beat mania series which is so weird and there was a beat mania 3 i think it only had a couple of versions before they discontinued that and now beat mania 2dx is the mainline series so there's no more regular beat mania there's no more um beat mania 3 it's just 2dx that's the main series now. Yeah, they reuse the same animation, but but no, shut up! I don't need your ads. Please don't be like something Sometimes. sad. We don't need anything sad right now. And yeah, like as I mentioned before, like yeah, you can see like the copyright year from 2000 to 2001. They made like multiple versions of these a year, which is probably why like there weren't many variations on the um original opening but you'll start to see it like happen as more time happens in between each version that gives them more time to like go all out interfaces and then six style like in 2002 and like sometimes they make the um opening like the song openings for each version they turn them into full songs like this opening is called tomorrow perfume and uh, yeah, you can actually play the song, I think in 6 style. Sometimes they wait to add it to the next version, sometimes they add it in the version that it's from. Like, it just depends. Uh, and also, yeah, just seeing, like, the, um, what is it? The progression of, like, these early 2000 aesthetics 
and going on into like modern day aesthetics and like HD and everything like that. And yeah, I forgot. I think there was like a little bit of a gap between 6th style and 7th style. Like, I don't remember why, but yeah, like there was a gap between the two games. And like at first, like they weren't going to continue 2DX, I think. I'm very like bad with like early Beatmania 2DX knowledge, but yeah, like to think like we could have lived in a world where like 2DX ended with 6th style. Which honestly, like a lot of my favorite songs and things wouldn't have existed. So I'm really, I would have been very sad. And then we have Ape Style. I think it was, maybe it was 7th and 8th Style? I don't remember. It's either 6th, 7th, and 8th Style, where there was like a gap in between, like when they were made and things like that. And I think they literally, like, had Konami on their Japanese website put out an interest form that was like, Hey, are you guys still interested in Beatmania 2DX? Like, should we go through the efforts of making more games? See, I'm adjusting volume, like, trying to look and see in comparison to my own volume. See, I don't think they equalized the volume all of these. Also, if you play Beatmania US, like, there was only one version of Beatmania 2DX that was released on home consoles in outside of Japan, but like mainly in the United States. So Knife Style was the basis for that, like it has the same menu music, the interface looks the same. It's just in Beatmania US, they made it purple and you would expect for me to like that, but the, it looks so ugly, like they ruined purple! <laughs> they ruined purple and they ruined a lot of things in Beatmania US, including, they, I think they, they, they thought that you, Americans were too stupid for the, another difficulty, which is like, the hardest difficulty, well, it used to be, now Legendary is the hardest difficulty. But, yeah, like, they did not include the another difficulty in Beatmania US, so all we had was beginner, normal, and hyper, make it purple. Yeah, but no, don't, because Beatmania US looks so ugly, and I feel bad saying that. Uh, and then we move on to Tim Style, which is like the last version where, like, it just includes the number and then style. Because if um, 11th style, we start getting into like, they start having subtitles within um, each game. And I do like whatever in the opening of each game, like they refer to the previous versions. And yeah, this is where we actually start getting to aesthetic 2DX. So yes, we get to Beatmania 2DX 11, 2DX Red. Which... Of course, like, the theme of this game is, like, blue. Like, what, don't you see all this blue over here? But if you don't see there's a bunch of blue, then I don't know what's going on with your eyes. You should get them checked. I'm kidding, it's red. I know what I'm saying. This is not a red, a, a, like, Yanny or Laurel situation. And then with 2DX12, we get the Happy Sky, and, like, also there are taglines for each game. I know the tagline for this one is just got splashed. Beast. This is kind of wild for 2000s. Yeah, this is still 2006. Oh my god, like, it's been almost 20 years since this game came out. I hate looking back on these interfaces and being like, this came out almost 20 years ago? What the fuck? And of course, yeah, like, I think another catchphrase of this version was like, are you happy? And it's just about like, literally just the sky and feeling good and stuff. And then 2DX13, we go... Like, yeah, then we got a distorted. I love how, like, they're like such contrasting themes with each subsequent version. And yeah, I think with distorted, um, they start implementing extra stage systems, which are basically like, um, for there are bonus songs, which are like the hardest songs of the game, and they all have like a central theme. Like, for distorted, the theme is like, what is it? It was like the, there's like a legend of like four guardians in Japan and like they each guard like the north, east, south, and west, like Siryu, Genbu, Byako, things like that. Also, I need to talk about gold because this is the version where my favorite girl, Hihumi, gets introduced. Like this is her version and like even the logo is like, hold on, I gotta pause to like, for Hihumi, like, I gotta sit for Hihumi. Cause yeah, like, he who me is, there are three sisters in this game, like, yes, there are indeed characters in this game series. I should have set this up beforehand. VTuber Stingers would be like, honestly, yeah. <laughs> High key, yeah. If I could implement, like, I'm trying to think of a way to implement, like, a 2DX-like aesthetic. 
in my streams. But I'm just like, how? I and mean, also money. Money is a b the bigger issue of high key. So let me look her up. Do. Hold on. We can go back to her original. You know what? No, let's just like, look up the image. She deserves the love and attention. I actually have a figure of her. And yes, there are Beatmania 2DX character figurines. Yes! There she is. Oh, wait. Hold on. I gotta. What? What did I just do? Oh, I get what I did. I messed up, like, my OBS tabs. Ah, I was too busy fangirling over her. All right, he who me, that's he who me. I love her, she is beautiful, and oh, not only because she wears a lot of purple and gold, like, as you can see, literally, like, her, like, outfit looks very similar to the logo and things like that. So, yeah, 2DS Gold is the game she's um, introduced in, and the whole theme of gold was just, like, very, you know what, actually, yeah, kind of like gold, just, like, look luxury royalty clothing things like that and she is the middle of the three umagiri sisters who are witches so of course that there's another connection i have with her she's beautiful i love her they need to use her more and i love her <laughs> so yeah i love he who me so much she's bae ah uh, wait hold on so yes back to 2dx intro fangirling oh my god this is from 2008 And also, this is where one of the Beatmania 2DX meme songs comes from, which I'll be going over later on. And then we have DJ Troopers. Which is literally, hold on, one of my favorite things about this is just... You had a 2DX turntable gun! <laughs> you gotta get a full combo in order to shoot your fucking gun! That's what I'm, how I imagine you use it. Like, I get they were trying to, like, be like, oh yeah, like, DJ Trooper, like, army and stuff, but I'm just like, this is so ridiculous, <laughs> so... <laughs> and they're trying to play it all so seriously. Oh, but then we come to what used to be one of my favorite versions until, like, a later version came out. NOT THIS! SHUT THE FUCK UP! Oh my god, I do not care, I literally do not care. THIS IS MY FAVORITE VERSION, NOT THAT AD! 2DX16 Empress, which, FYI, it came out on my birthday, November 18th, so I feel like it was destiny for me to like this version, and yeah, this is basically just pink and butterflies and sparkly jewels and stuff, but the extra stage system for this game is actually kind of sad, because it's called Empress Place, and basically, like, there are a set of songs that are based around empresses who died tragically, so, and they, like, the way you access it is, like, the menu for it is kind of creepy. But I also love that even more, though. And then 2DX17 Sirius, which is based around space and things like that, and has one of the coolest ending songs and, like, the coolest ending music video, and I love it so much. And I would definitely go over that. And then we have the beach episode! That's right, there's a whole 2DX game that's basically the beach episode. <laughs> Resort Anthem is literally just, like, interfaces like beach, sunshine, partying, things like that. So I, I love describing to people, yes, this is the Beatmania 2DX Beach episode. And of course there's like art of like all the 2DX girls, like or at least a good amount of the characters in like bikinis and things like that. It's like, eh, there's been 18 versions, we deserve a beach episode. It took how many years? Alright, this came out 2010. 2DX started I think in 97? 98? Yeah, it took over 10 years for y'all to get a beach episode. Like y'all definitely deserve it. And then next we have 2DX19, Linsel? Linkel? Uh, it's been pronounced many different ways. This is where we start getting into the territory of, hey, Konami wants to make up words now. What, Lin Linsel? Yeah, it's link plus circle. That's what it means. So, yeah, I don't like Linsel's most of it. <laughs> the th main thing I like about Linsel, though, is like the boss song, Diablo. I think, yeah, Linsel was the very first version where, like, I was following it as it came out, like, as news and video and streams were happening when the game released. I remember staying up super late, just, like, listening and being like, oh, this song sounds cool, and this song sounds cool. And then Trikoto, another made-up word, which 
means tricolor, as you can tell from the logo, most likely. Uh, what was I gonna say? I think this is when Beatmania 2 DX, like, they upgraded the arcade cabinets to display HD video, so this is the very first HD version of Beatmania 2 DX, and it was in 2012. This game is 10 years old. This game is literally 10 years old. Oh, jeez. <laughs> Man, I, don't, I can't believe I've been in the rhythm games for 10 years. And then we have Beatmania 2DX Edgy, I mean Spada. Which, like, the theme was around swords and, like, things like that. Just swords and fire and, like, knights and things like that. It aged like fine wine. <laughs> Yee. Yeah. And there are cool things about Spada, it's just... God, when I first saw this logo, I was like, what the fuck is that? <laughs> and then we're getting into 20... Oh, Nexus 22, which is like one of my all-time favorite versions. If It's tied between this and version 26. Pendulum is so fucking cool because they did an awesome thing where like... Some days, um, were called Future Phase, which is where this music would play. And it was like more techno-y and like the interface was more purple. And then there are some days which were a present phase, which is like where the interface was more white and the interface was calming and things like that. And it actually had a clock at the top that showed like the date. And it would show the normal date in present phase, but in future phase, like the date would be all messed up, like something's corrupting the future or something. And I'm still talking about Pendul because, Haki, I don't have a lot to say about Copula. It's trains. The thing was trains. And I know trains are a huge thing in Japan, but not where I'm from, so I'm not... I couldn't have fully appreciate it, I feel like. There did, was a bunch of awesome songs, though. And then Shinobas! Even more edge. Literally, like, the logo is pointy. And another cool thing about Shinobas was... It, yes, it's, like, pronounced Shinobas. It's very difficult for me to say, actually, so I have to concentrate pretty hard. Um, each day of the week, like, there was, like, a different mini music, like... And, like, the color of the menus would change. I forgot what colors corresponded to each day, but... Yeah, every day you played the game, you would hear, like, a different menu music and things like that. So I really loved when they did things like that. I don't think they do it too much nowadays, but... It was still a really cool thing for them to do. And there was a different artist who did each, um, menu. Like, each day's music and everything. So next we get to 25, which... Um, as soon as it loads... Well, not loads like as soon as it progresses but 25 is a very special version for me because it was the very first version i actually got to play for myself so yes this version is themed about racing so basically initial d like it's 2dx initial d like episode and like i said before like this is the version like when round one opened near me this is the version they had so it was the very first version of 2dx that i could play myself so it has a very special place in my heart, and I miss it dearly. God, it was back in 2018. It's been four years! Uh, but I still have, like, I said, a specific fondness for Cannonballers and this menu music. And yeah, there, of course there are plenty of songs based around racing and things like that. But then we get to my absolute favorite 2DX version, like... 26 high key knocked them all out of the water because 26 was the 20th anniversary version of Beatmania 2DX. So they went fucking big. Like, there were so many callbacks to previous versions. And just like, I wish they did like a full animated opening, but this music's still nice. And like, you can also play this song. Like, this song is called Rootage. And the video for this song makes me so happy and like, it fills me with such joy. And I'll get into that when we go over the video later on. Don't know why that portion was short. We made it to get to 27, heroic verse. I have so many mixed feelings on you. You're purple, which is a plus, but there weren't many songs that I liked from this version. And I don't like the way the purple is implemented. And I mean, this music is good. It's just, it just something in it doesn't fully click with me, Gundam. No, not Gundam. It's like, this version was based around superheroes. Actually, apparently that was the original theme for Pendul. Like, the whole dual, like, superhero. Like, oh, you're like a regular person by day, but then by night you're a superhero. But then they took that concept and I guess they must have saved it for version 27. So, 
Yeah, this version is based around like superheroes and villains and things like that. It's just one of the like 2DS characters just in like a mech kind of suit thing. In version 28, it's Bistrover. Food. Food. It's food. It's 2DX food version. So Kamen Rider like, exactly. Yeah, that's honestly that probably like it wouldn't surprise me if it was a Kamen Rider reference. So yeah, it's like I think each game does have a story mode, but much most of the stuff doesn't really get translated. But from what I could tell, like the extra stage bonus modes was just these two characters going around the world in like a um, Iron Chef type competition. Hey guys, check out this new game, Galahad 3083. Also, yeah, if you notice, like that's one of the menu music I play during my breaks. Ah, uh, this is long. We can like go over this later if there's time. So yeah, that's like all the openings. Well, we don't have. Hold on, where is it? Ah, uh, skip, skip, skip. You know what? Yeah, we'll go into like. So the current version is Cast Hour, but the last video didn't include Cast Hour because it was made before it was even announced. We're gonna skip this because this is also long, but like we'll go into it. But yes, we're gonna start out with one of the kind of meme songs. Some people might recognize the song from, um, what is it? Dance Revolution. And like, there's a special story behind these girls. Also, warning, like there might be flashing effects. In some of these videos, I'll try to like remember which ones have more intense effects and warn people before things happen. But ah, excuse me, holy crap. Uh, but yeah, let's see. So B for you, I believe, stands for Bimani for you, feeling better, Zora. I am. Like, oh my god, I was feeling so bad earlier, but that's because like I made a mad dash to like the package center because I had to pick up something today, and then I hopped on the bus took the bus basically in a loop back to where I live and then I had to um I ran and took a shower and ordered food and I think I did too much in too little time and that plus the heat because I don't do well in the heat like that basically like destroyed me and I had to like sleep a couple hours to get those like gross feelings out but I'm feeling good now I am feeling way too hyped to be honest because there's so many so much holo stars and holo live news happening and I'm also talking about rhythm games Zora speed Yes, I am. Like literally, me calculating. Okay, I can if I go to the package center at this time and take this bus, then I can leave at this time and reduce the amount of time I have to be out in the heat. But yeah, these like initial D girls driving. They appear in a lot of videos over the course of 2DX history. I don't know if this is their first appearance, but this is one of like. God, I love that explosion at the end. <laughs> I love the early videos. They have like their own charm and stuff. Oh, and then the video for 2002, like, actually a lot of reasons why I like these videos is because, so I used to make AMVs, um, I think in early 2010s, late 2000s, so like the editing in a lot of these videos is just like, yes, ah, oh, the timing is so good. Ah, uh, and this, this is like one of those videos where like the editing and stuff really comes together for me. It's like early dead or alive designs. It makes sense because yeah, this video is from 2002 and the song is called 2002. And yeah, you could definitely tell like I put the videos in order of like which ones came from the earlier Beatmania 2DX versions and which ones came later. So yes, I literally like I like made this playlist and then I was like, okay, this is like this is goes here and this goes here and I can talk about this. And I'll like, I'll share the playlist too after stream, in case you guys want to watch it too. Cause yeah, it does feature a couple of songs that I play during my breaks. But I'm just like, it's not enough to like, just let you guys hear the songs. I gotta show you guys the cool ass videos too. And there's like so many like, good aesthetics here. Oh man. Oh yeah, the character that appears in this video is called um, Tora Yamato. She used to appear in like all of the videos by an artist named Tiger Yamato. Unfortunately, I think he stopped making music in like, um, what is it? It was 2DX13 Distorted, so that would have been 2008 or so? So yeah, he stopped like making music. Like I think he literally, like his parents left him like a ramen shop or something to own in the United States and he was like yeah like they left it to me so I'm gonna stop making music and go run my parents shop 
Yeah, please. We're always distributing the bangers. Oh, thank you. It makes me happy to know you guys like my tasty music. Uh, what the fuck? Go away. Honestly, we could skip this. Also, I'm sorry about some of these that are going to be on shaky cam because people didn't do a good job of like maintaining some of these things. So yeah, this is an example of like unlocking an extra stage. Music of ramen, what a choice. I know, right? <laughs> so yeah, Toru Yamato's last appearance was in um the song Tiger Yamato, but there was a song in, I think, 2DX Tricoto called like The Travelers of Space Time where she appears in that video and like, Tiger Yamato didn't compose it. She just randomly was in the video, and but she hasn't been in any songs ever since then. So we'd love to see her back again. Like you have all these cute designs of cute girls, and they don't want to use them. So yeah, when you unlock an extra stage in Big Mania 2DX, like it gives you like a cool little graphic, and yeah, the extra stage song for Ape Style is Sakura. So you get a cool background of cherry blossom petals. And then it tells you, yeah, of course, like, what grade you made on, like, whatever song you just did. But when you get to the extra stage, like, it usually plays, like, a snippet or, like, a, um, it changes the background to, like, Be All Cherry Blossoms or, like, whatever the so extra stage song is, and it changes the music that plays. You should craft a musically inclined ramen franchise. That would be great. Oh, oh my god, like, 2DX themed ramen, but I feel like there isn't enough of a clientele for that besides me and i'm as much as i would love to i can't make that whole business survive on my own uh let's see oh yeah and then the flashing difficulty means that it's super very difficult please be careful about choosing it and then when you select the song yeah cherry blossom petals appear as beautiful as it appears, this song is very dangerous. Oh, hey, look, the Initial D girls are back, and you guys might recognize this song as a meme song. Ah, oh, it's only 240p? Lame. Also, I don't want Spotify. Not after all the shit you guys have pulled. So yeah, it's like, this song is Red Zone, it did originate in Beatmania 2DX, um, Red. And yeah, that's footage of, I believe, um, who is it? Who composes this song? It's either LED or Chorus K. Like, yeah, like, they used to hold events, like, all the time where they would just, like, have the actual DJs who composed the songs, like, just perform those songs. And I wanted to go to one of those events for the longest time, even though I'm very, like, <laughs> Scared about going to clubs and things like that. Uh, yeah, they're just drag racing. Like literally, it's just initial D just with girls and all the cars that like uh, the I forget their names. Like all these girls have names and stuff. It's just I don't know them too well. And yeah, they always race in a car that's like themed around whatever the current version of Beatmania 2DX is. So first this version is like the 2DX red car. Which I would love to see recreated in real life. God, all the videos made from this song. Look at those drifts! Look at those sick drifts! Explosion at the end! They always include an explosion at the end! Oh, awesome! Yes, so in Beatmania US, they included remixes of popular English songs because Americans are dumb and won't like our original songs, so we gotta get songs that they already know. So one of those songs included a remix of the song Toxic by Britney Spears, and it includes its own video that's kind of a... Ah, I keep, uh, I keep burping, it's so embarrassing. I'm too hype. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, it includes a, um, video inspired by, um, the original music video. And yes, this was, like I said, this was included in Beatmania US, but I think this is one of the only, like, Beatmania U US songs that was ported to, um, like, the Japanese version of Beatmania. I think this was in 2DX Red. Yeah, this was in 2DX Red. 
and this is more here just for like a nostalgic reason because I remember playing like the song on my copy of Big Mania US, which I'm so mad that I turned in because, well, I'm not as mad because I do actually have a Japanese PlayStation 2 with like a Japanese version of 2DX16 Empress and um, Poppy Music Party, which I believe were the last versions to be um, released on the PlayStation 2. It's just, Haki, I have no idea where it's at because I left my Japanese PlayStation 2 at home and my mom moved and she has a tendency to just put my shit in boxes and not be know what box she puts them in. So yeah, I have no idea where it's at. It's somewhere, but I don't want to go through the effort of looking through it. I do like these character designs though. And yeah, some of the outfits and like characters in this video are inspired by like the original video. Uh, I wish they did more of like these character designs. God, the note chart's like, it's coming back to me now. I used to be so bad at this song. Like, it would sound like so fucked up. I was like, Britney Spears would hate me. My job is to make college easier because- Yeah, I feel like if I used you, like, my school gets on people's asses if they use any external services to help with things, like, so yeah, no thank you. Like, you gotta like, go to like, this thing called Honor Court, and you gotta like, actually defend your case and stuff in front of like, a jury? It's so fucked up. Man, that was fire. I know, right? God, I wish all of these, like, these songs were available on Spotify, but I think they're only available, or not Spotify, Apple Music or whatever, but they're only available in Japan, like, they haven't released them, like, outside of Japan, I believe, and that makes me so mad. And again, we have 2DX Distorted, but this time it's actually going to be the full interface um, of the game. Or at least it should be. Okay, I thought it was off for a second. So yeah, this like, is an example of, like I said, the amount of effort that like the staff goes through to like give everything a cohesive theme and like make it still like easy to navigate, but still like having each version have its own like... Yeah, literally having its own, like, things to, like, go to each menu. Yeah, like, this looks like... Okay, yep, it's the arcade version, but this is before e-amusement, so... Yep, it's just asking you, hey, single play or double play? And then it will go to mode select. So yeah, there are usually, like, well, at least here, there's, like, five modes. Beginner, standard, expert, danite mode, and free play. Which of course, yeah, free play, like just play any song when you want. Um, Donate mode is like a class-based mode, and there are like different rankings for 2DX players. Um, there's like beginner. I forget the specific names of the mode because I actually don't play Don mode, that class mode, that often. But yeah, it's basically just like a way for you to be like, hey, like you're another 2DX player. Like, what class are you? Oh, I'm. Uh, I actually forgot what class I am. I got through like the first, like the lowest bit, so I'm like, I'm actually in Don mode, but yeah. Also, another cool thing about 2DX is yeah, like everything's categorized in different, like you could categorize it by like alphabetical, or you could categorize it by like what version the song is from. There's usually like a menu vo voice that says like, hey, whatever you're selecting on, like it'll say distorted, 2DX, like 10th style, 9th style. Yes, this is the storage interface. So like I said, it's not my favorite, but I think it's like a good like example of um just like how um the interfaces work. Also speaking of distorted, here's the like extra extra stage song. So I mentioned oh wait, did I not include waxing and landing? I didn't. Oh man. Hold on. I'm gonna I'm gonna do a pro gamer move or not all right so yes i mentioned there's like extra stage systems and this i do like as much as i'm kind of like iffy about distorted's interface like i do love the extra stage system it has so where is it is it here it makes sense to be here because all the other songs are there but i guess not please don't tell me i have to like go even further it's tripping contact this channel has like a lot of good, like, kind of like 
stuff from like I guess ten years ago. Like they have HD versions of like a lot of stuff. There it is. So yeah, I mentioned before, 2DX Distorted, it's like extra stage system is um based around like the four lords of Japanese mythology. And like, yeah, the cardinal gates. So yeah, each of the cardinal directions, north, east, south, and west has like a specific boss and boss song associated with it. So one of my favorite boss songs out of the four are um, is Seriu's song, who I believe is a water dragon. Oh yeah, and you also unlock Cardinal Gate by being like, hey, like, do you want to enter it? And it's like, yeah. So yeah, Suzaku, Byako, Genbu, and Syria. And you choose which boss you want to take on. And you take on, wait, eventually you defeat all the bosses. The secret ultimate boss appears, which is what the song that I just was on. And yeah, when you select the song normally, it like shows the actual title of the song, but um, the title is credited to Seriu. I mean, not title. Um, the artist is Seriu, but really it's just like the the um, names of the artists of these songs are really just aliases of artists who've worked on the series before. Like Seriu is the alias of um, Ryutaro Nakahara. But another cool thing when you select the song in the extra stage mode is the interface of the game changes. Like it now looks like Seriu's interface. It's all blue and like dragony and stuff. And yeah, there she is. That's the 2DX version of Syria. Make sure audio's good. Yeah, audio's very good. See, I gotta change my own headphone settings though. I think this song actually is available on Apple Music and Spotify. Because Ryu has it on like his own album, I think. God. And yes, this is the another difficulty, and like I said, this is one of the boss songs of Distorted, so of course it's going to be hard as balls. Oh, so yeah, that dragon stare you too, I think both the girl and the dragon are the same one. It's just like, oh yay, a nice break! God, I need a break just from looking at those notes. And yeah, I'm usually able to play like hyper mode, which is like the in-between mode. Like I said, it's usually normal hyper in another. Beginner is like easier than normal, but it's not available for all the songs. And then Legendaria is the difficulty that's even di more difficult than another. And Legendaria is kind of like a spiritual successor to what used to be called Black Another, which were like, yeah, again, like the but they got renamed to Legendaria and like some Black and Other charts that were exclusive to console versions of 2DX have been ported to um, the arcade versions as Legendaria charts. And yeah, I don't even, I don't even think about Legendarias. I don't even look at those. Maybe one day I can play at this level, but right now I can see the notes. I just can't. The hand-eye coordination is not good enough. But yep, that was Waxing and Winding, and that was the song for Syria, so... But let's go back to where we were at. That's not what I wanted. I seem to be lost from my group of fellow geese. A nice pair of abs distracted me, and now I'm here. Yo! Like, like abs are like... Hold on. Uh, gotta get back. So let me do that. And of course, it's not gonna get me to that. That's okay. We're trying to get back to the playlist. But hello, Business Goose. I hope you're able to, like, get back to your fellow geese. So where was I? Ah, Nageki no Ki, who, yeah, I mentioned there was a final, final boss of 2DX Distorted. This is that final, final boss. And it's one of the toughest songs in all of Beatmania 2DX, even to this day. No, I don't even know what this ad is. I don't even want to know, so go away. And yeah, like I, yeah, the rest of the like interface looks super threatening. There's like bones. E. And the Geki no Ki, I believe, translates to Tree of Lamentation. Hey, remember when I said I could see the notes last time? I can kind, I can mostly see the notes now, but it's gonna get even worse later on.
But yeah, you just got these weird, like, demons just bothering you while you're playing. Uh, God, I can barely even pass this song on normal. Trust me, I've tried multiple times. But luckily, like, um, this isn't an actual person playing, this is just autoplay, which, yeah, it's literally just the notes automatically playing. And it's just a mode for, like, players to study up on. Oh, hey, my favorite part of the song. Sorry, I'm just letting it play because I'm like, this, this part's so good. And yeah, like, when I mentioned, like, when there's 2DX boss music, like, they go so hard on the boss music. Oh my god, it's almost been, it's been 40 minutes, damn. It's 40 minutes of me fangirling about 2DX. This is peak Zora energy. And then I'm gonna fangirl about Holostar stuff. Oh god, I hate, I hate notes like that. I hate, like, stair, I believe they're called staircase notes, where you just have to go back and forth. I'll switch panel starting in about 15 minutes. Eh! I'm gonna miss it! I, cause like, I knew if I started my stream at the normal time, I might have been able to make it, but I was just feeling so garbage, and I was just like, uh. Let me know if anything important happens, like, I'll, uh. <laughs> but yes, that was the Geki Doki. And then we have the ending credits for 2DX Distorted, which... I think these are the special ones. So yeah, like, if you, like, do funny things with, like, the controls, or, like, um... Yeah, if you press buttons and stuff, you could change the angle of, like... Yeah, because this is basically just a zoom-in of the logo, so... But if you mess with the buttons and do stuff, you can basically, like, make your own, like, little kind of video of, like, the logo being, like, looked at and stuff like that. Anyway. Oh, hey, another meme song. So yeah, I mentioned there was a meme song for Beatmania 2DX Gold. I think this is like the last song that you unlock in that version too. God. God, it's just like, it's English. It's, this is just English, the song. God. I have, I love in, I don't know, I have so many mixed emotions on this song. <laughs> it's so gaudy, but that's the point of it. Oh, and this song also helped me remember like most of the early versions of 2DX. So let's see, hopefully the time's right. First style, substream, second style, third style, fourth style, fifth style, sixth style, Seven style, eight style, nine style, it's easy, but then 10 style, 2DX red, happy sky, distorted, and 2DX go! And then there's DJ Troopers, Empress, Sirius, Resort Anthem, Linsel, Tricoto, Spada, Pendrel, Copula, um, Cenobus, Cannonballers, Rootage, Heroic Verse, Vistrover, and Cast Hour! So, yep, there's 29 versions of this. This game that I've remembered. God, Gold Rush. <laughs> Such a dumb song, but I love it because of that. God, DJ Troopers was 2007. Games were selling use in Japan only. I just like, uh huh, yeah, sure, let's go. It's, uh, yeah, mm hmm, yeah, sure. Like that is totally a bite. Like, people abide by that. And then, again, DJ Trooper's opening, but now an actual HD. Of course, Area 15, because it's the 15th version. Again, the 2DX gun. I hate that gun so much! I hate it! It's so stupid! How does it work? Uh, but, like, this time we're gonna, like, see the interface of it, which... As dumb as DJ Trooper is, is I do like the um, menu music and interface and things like that. And then... Yep, again, asking you like, hey, start button, what mode do you want to play? Single or double play? It's like, single play! 
Oh, the transitions are so cool. This time there's bonus modes. There's like, you could just choose a tutorial from the menu, menu instead of, I believe, you would select it. I think you would select in a standard. Yeah. Which mode matches you? I love that. I love that. Just like, what mode are you feeling like today? Yeah, they just choose standard. Which is basically just, yeah, three stages. You might get an extra stage if you do good enough. There are certain conditions to get to the extra stage. On the menu, um, the menu announcer voice is different in each version too. And in some versions of 2DX, you can actually unlock the previous um, announcer voices or background music, things like that. And then let's see if there's. I'm gonna skip to. Oh yeah, there's like usually a timer to select like the song you want. And that's DJ Troopers, at least like the ma regular interface. Oh hey, a return of like one of the Mimi songs from earlier. So they made a sequel to Be For You called Be For You, Bimani For You Mix. Like done by the same artist who did um, Gold Rush, or remixed by the artist who did Gold Rush. And this time they're in a 2DX Empress themed car. And yeah, Bimani For You like mix means that like there are some parts in the song that have references to other Bimani games. I'll see if I can remember them when we get to it. Let's see. And also, let's give us that good 1080p. I can barely tell. Well, it's already a 1080p. Look at those drifts. Look at those thick drifts. God, the zoom in on the boobs. Imagine this remade for 2022. God. It would be sad though because there are some series that I mentioned here that are dead. Wait, GFD and Poppin. So yeah, Guitar Freaks, Drum Mania, then Poppin for Poppin Music, and 2DX for Beatmania 2DX. And then D D D D D R. Guitar Freaks, Drum Mania, Poppin Music. So yeah, but all those series are still alive though, thank goodness. Oh yeah, I think he mentioned Mambo Gogo there, and I'm just like, yeah, that series, will, he had like one version. It wasn't even a series, that was just a game. Well, you know what, I'm just realizing the series that they mentioned like explicitly in the video are still around, so you know what, this will be fine. It's like they knew what series they were going to continue. Oh wait, e -mall. I forgot about e -mall. The yeah, emo was a method of um, unlocking songs, I believe, for popping music. Like, I still don't know the full details about emo because I know a bit about popping music, but I don't know a lot about it. But I do like playing it. I want to play it more. It's just the version we have at round one is Fantasia, which is like from 10 years ago or something. Oh, no crime! So this song is actually like basically an AMV of um oh god no crimes case is like very weird. So there was there's a Japanese movie called um Pyrokinesis I believe or no it's called Crossfire and yeah it's about um this woman who has like pyrokinesis powers and like her trying to like maintain control of them and like everything that gets associated with that so I think Konami released a comic of that um movie and they turned it to a manga and like they released this song as kind of like it's like a tie-in with that manga I really want to read this because it does look interesting at least these images look interesting and I want to know the story about it and I think the movie might be available on YouTube like someone might have uploaded it I don't know if it has subtitles or not but like God, I really wanted to read this, but there's like no like translation of it, and I don't think there will ever be a translation of it because I think I'm the only person in the world who wants to read this. Oh, just realized the audio's been a bit loud. Oh, it looks fine. It's fine. But man, I love like stories about like psychic powers and stuff, and like I think it's her trying to like escape both like the police in like some secret organization or something. 
And yeah, at the end it says Crossfire. Crossfire, that's the name of the movie. Don't care, don't care about your stupid ass. Leave me alone, blah, 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 blah. All right, we're not gonna watch the video for this like song because high key, I don't really like most of the Empress Place songs. But yeah, I did mention like in 2DX Empress, there are, there's an extra stage system called Empress Place, similar to Cardinal Gate. And yeah, when you get to it, like again, each of the songs are based around an Empress who I think died in a tragic way, which is why like, this is kind of creepy. And it's portrayed as like, yeah, you can hear kind of like these weird voices and like, Everything's purple, which apparently to Empress, it's like in 2DX Empress, purple is creepy and pink is good. And then when you choose the song, just like in Cardinal Gate. Yeah, the like interface, like it's normally pink, but it changes to like the color of whatever Empress it's um, portraying. So yeah, um, Arabian Rave Night represents Cleopatra. There's a song called Marie Antoinette, which of course represents Marie Antoinette. Um... Uh, What's what's consort Yang Yuhan's name? I mean song. Um I forgot her song. But yeah, I'm just like these are all sad though. But yeah, in first place is super cool. It's just I don't really like any of the songs that represents each of these empresses. Yes, next is Vermillion, which is one of my like favorite songs plus videos. Like the editing is so good because like um, Vermillion was the ending credit song for 2DX Sirius, and like they do like a lot of things that call back to Sirius's interface and things like that in this video. And the editing is just so good. I think like literally in the song like. Um, for I think most of the songs they release like both song comments and like comments about the making of the video and I think they mentioned this was the first video that was finished for Resort Anthem and like they really focused on like the timing of like the editing and things like that and I'm just like oh, I just love watching this Let's see. and also I just like Sirius is a aesthetic because of course it's space themed and of course I gotta like stiff it's space themed. Hold on, what's this? Uh. Alright, hold on, where where ah let's see oh! the hollow service thing is gonna start in four minutes This is me Oh, I'm reading through this. This is a cool stream idea. <gasps> Desmir, hello! Oh my god, this is your first time chatting. Hello, how are you doing? Yes, I'm glad I get to like fangirl about like all the 2DX stuff. Wait, did I not include? Oh, I did. Gamba Zora. <laughs> so much cool stuff is happening today. I can't handle it. Also, like, prelude about this song so Bamani did a collaboration with like um where like a bunch of like their resident artists did remixes of um Toho music so this song is um yeah oh yeah Kashi Kakashi which is like I believe Yukari Yakumo's theme and like there's custom um videos for all the songs I think um they did a remix of Vermilia Scarlet's theme too so you can look that up as well but I did Yukari because she's my favorite And see, we could turn it up a bit. And I do genuinely like this song plus this video. Oh my god, another. Oh my god, so many new people today! Hello! Oh, that's a cute emo! Hello, Songer! I'm good. Was just playing DJ Max. I never get to appreciate the BG. Is. Oh my God! You play DJ Max? Yo! Oh my God! Oh, I know there's online mode. If you ever wanna like play together or something, that would be so good. 
Oh, Yukari is so pretty. And also, I love her like powers and everything, even though she kind of seems a bit OP. Uh, yeah, like I focus like way too much or like help everyone as well. Oh, I'm doing good right now. I was feeling like pretty bad earlier in the day, but right now I'm doing like way too good. <laughs> Like, like I said, there's so much like Holostar stuff happening and I'm getting to talk about rhythm games. I'm trash, but yeah, I'd be down. <gasps> Yo! Oh, that'd be so hype. Oh, I don't even have like, I've never actually played DJ Max against someone. So I still haven't even gotten that achievement. Like, I know there's an achievement in DJ Max Respect where like, you play online, but like, I could never get a match against anyone. So I've never gotten it. <laughs> Uh, I, honestly, like this event, like the crossover Toho event, did get me to have more interest in Toho. But there's so many characters, and I'm just like, oh, I'm bad at like shoot 'em ups. Oh yeah, I forgot this user like to like make sure that their data isn't shown. Like they always put a picture of a baseball player. Pendulum Talisman, another awesome song. So this is kind of like yeah, the genre. So. Oh yeah, quick explanation about how things in Beatmania 2DX work. The title at the top is the genre. They Most of the time they make up genres. The um, big text in the middle is the title of the song, and then at the bottom is the artist of the song. So it's credited to Neko LED Master because Neko Mata Master um, made the BGA, like the background music, excuse me, not the BGA, the BGM for what was it, present phase, which is like calming, and that's what's going to be the first half of the song, but in the second half of the song, it's going to feature the um, future phase background music. So it's like a combination of like both sides of it. And I play the song all the time because I love this video for a reason you will find out in a little bit. And also, I love, like, aesthetics of things pertaining to, like, time and clocks, and, of course, like, that had to do, like, I'm just like, yo, it's just like, you're feeding me, 2DX is feeding me too much. Oh, yeah, that's what it, um, that's the oldest Umegiri sister, Amito. So, there were shenanigans that happened with her, like, she's supposed to be the head of the family and, like, had the most powerful magic, so they tried to do a spell on her to give her, like, an eternally youthful body. They fucked it up. So now she's stuck in like the body of like her 18 year old self even though she's older. Also hey, look, it's the reason why I love this song in this video. Well, one of the reasons. Heal me, my girl, I love you! Yes! Killing that, kill, killing that outfit, yes! And like I mentioned, he who meets the middle sister, she gets picked on a lot. She bullies the youngest sister a lot. Um, The youngest sister, we haven't seen her. Um, the youngest sister is Araha. So yeah, he who me bullies Iraha, but then like Amato bullies he who me. And even though Amato looks like the youngest, like she's still like, of course, the most powerful. And yes, this is like the future phase background music. God, this art's so pretty. Like the artist who um does most of like the art for 2DX is um Goli Matsumoto. And like, God uh, bless, he's released a couple of art books and I'm so mad because there was an art book released for a 2DX Rudish that sold out super quickly. And now like, the only way you can find it is at like, jacked up prices. So I'm like, fuck that. But I want that art book so bad. And yeah, like, it's he who me, but he who me has been, so he who me sometimes gets possessed by this um, ancient Japanese, I believe princess called, um, Himiko, like, she was actually, like, one of the final bosses of 2DX Empress, and, yeah, for some reason, she's captured Amato and is doing shenanigans to the timeline. Look at her! Look at her! Look at how cute she looks! God, this outfit, look, she always looks so cute! Sorry. Wow. You guys are, like, finally seeing, like, Unleashed Zora about, like, love my love of Beatmania 2DX specifically. Wait, I did include it? I guess I just didn't put it in a good spot. I forgot to put it in the right spot. Anyway, this is a nice video that like has um 
the interfaces for the first three HD versions of 2DX. So that includes, again, Tricolo, Spada, and Pendule. And luckily, it includes both, like, future and present phase because the thing I hate about whenever people upload videos of Pendule is that they only include one phase. And I'm like, no, include both. So even though, like, so we already saw the opening, so I'm going to just skip the beat. So for, also for those who don't know, there is something fangirl ascended. Truly, truly like I'm just like ascended fangirl mode right now. But yeah, for those who don't know, like most um oh, are we frozen? Okay, we're good. So um, there's something called an e amusement pass. Basically, in Japanese arcades, you can get a card that enables you to save all your data and like log into like whatever games you want to. And Konami is just called an e amusement pass. And yeah, whenever you start up in one of the arcade games that asks you, hey, do you want to like use your e-amusement pass or do you have one to log in with? And again, we're going to get that again. Yeah, e-amusement pass. And then you got to put in your pin code. Luckily, it doesn't show it on the screen. Oh, yeah, this super threatening music for Spada and like the threatening announcer. I don't like this guy. He freaks out when you like mess up your input for like your pin code for your e-amusement pass. Oh, I need to find that video. He just like yells or something like he takes it way too seriously like dang Plus the amusement pass used to be really hard to like They would mess up all the time like they were very finicky and like It would frequently think that you clicked another number when you meant to click like another number. So yeah, it was dumb God Spada is literally just like the meme of like the shadow the hedgehog logo but it says out the edge but it's literally because this is based around swords and most of the interface is very pointy but wow, i chose like the like a prim song for spada amazing and present phase yes oh yeah like this is supposed to be um it, uh, ah pendule introduced two characters kairos and chronos i believe I think in present phase it's Kronos who's speaking to you, and then in future phase it's Kairos who talks to you. Oh yeah, when you like first um, log into a new version, it asks you like, "Hey, do you want to like transfer your data over to the new version?" And this isn't just a Beat Mania thing; it does this for like every Bimani game. Like the new version of DDR that came out, it asks you, "Hey, do you want to transfer your data from whatever the previous version you played?" And yeah, it's asking you, hey, do you want to use the tutorial? And I'm like, no, I know how to play this game, trust me. And another thing I love about Pendul is like how the like music just builds up like the, as you go further and further into the menus. Like that, oh, I'm like, yes! Oh, it's so good! Oh yeah, yeah, like I mentioned, I'm gonna do a quick pause. Yeah, it shows you like the date that you're playing and like whatever, whatever hour you're playing it and present phase when you reach future phase as we'll see in a little bit yep it's more purple and black and it looks cooler yep this is Kairos yep and she represents the future Let's see. Yep, and like the music starts out like minimal, but then it gets more and more elements as you progress through the menu. And yep, as you can see, like the clock is fucked up. Like yeah, it says we're now like you're in 2222 September 22nd. So yeah, I don't think that's the right time. Like, unless, like, you've got some time travel shenanigans that you can do, in which case, you know what, maybe it might be right. I don't think it's right. Like, I still haven't perfected my time travel stuff, so, yeah. Oh, yeah, they did a, like, I forgot, Bimani did a collab with, um, Gumi and, like, released the song Idola. Oh, yeah, then that's just showing, like, what the gameplay feels look like. Yeah, that's Tricodos. And then, yeah, 
Usually when, um, in most 2DX games, when you get, like, above a double A, you get a cute anime picture. And I think when you get a triple A, you get, like, an even more fan service picture. So that's just a little bit of extra incentive for you to do well. Just, just a little bit. And that's Spada's play field. That is, is that Amato? I think that's Amato. And Impendual. Unfortunately, like, Impendual doesn't seem like, yeah, there wasn't too many, um, I think they added in cute photos later on, but I don't think they had them when the game first released. And yeah, when at the game over screen, it tells you, hey, here's all the things that changed about your player data. And remember to take your e amusement pass. Seriously, do not forget that thing. I mean, you can buy a new one, but you can prevent buying a new one. I would recommend it. And yeah, they even have custom game over screens. Like I said, like they go so they go all out with like the interfaces for these games. Oh my god! Elaine! Thank you for the raid! Hello everyone! My name is Zora Takachi. I'm an octopus witch who loves rhythm games and this stream is literally just me fangirling about the interfaces in like background animations of the rhythm game series Beat Mania 2DX. How was your stream? What were you playing? Also everyone go follow Elaine if you haven't already. God, that music sounds so sad. <laughs> Hello, Buffy Mark. Thank you. Welcome to the Sith Love House. <laughs> Every time someone joins, I get punched, but it's I'm glad. It's like if I'll be happy to get punched. Well, not really punched. I'll just get shit thrown at me. Eh, but welcome, welcome. How was your stream? We finished the sock commission, overlay commission. <gasps> Yo, nice. Oh, your sock babies are so cute. Hold on. I got to show off my sock version. Hold on. Ah, I should have it. Don't I have it? If I don't have it, then... Oh, wait, no. It's in um media source. Whoa. <laughs> oh, hold on. I'll get you then because I'm like dealing with OBS shenanigans right now. E, e, e. Where did I put it? Where did I put it? Where did I put it? Here? No. Oh, no. I know where I put it. I'm just doomed. Oh, it's there. And then there. And then there. And then there. So, yes. Also, yeah. If you haven't gotten a sock baby from Elaine, like, totally get one. Uh, Where did it go? Well, oh, hold on. Loop. Loop. That's why. Okay. So yes, look at me. It's me as a sock. Look at my mouth. Look at it go. It's so cute. Ma, 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 ma. Oh, Zodiac Gaming. Yes, so Elaine does sock baby commissions as well as, um, was it the popsicle stick commissions? So yes, if you haven't gotten one, please check her out for those. And you're, I didn't know you were also doing overlay commissions, so I might have to check you all out. Whoa. Whoa. What was that? Huh. Oh, thank you for the head pads. Oh my God, is it still acting weird? Hold on, I'm gonna fix this right now. Oh, I know why it's not working because I'm not in my usual source right now. Uh, hold on, let me. I will. I'm gonna make sure you like get your head pads. And so, let's go here. I will literally do it by my like hand myself. So hold on. Thank you for the head pad. Thank you, Buffy Mark. Oh my god, I'm, I'm I'm still just going. My sock version is still just just nomin. Nomin nomin nom. Okay, let's stop that. <laughs> so the next video uh, I want to talk about is Starlight Dance Hall, which is again, it's one of my it does one of my favorite things, which is call back to earlier versions of 2DX and like all the aesthetics and things like that. So I can literally I'm not super good at it but later on like when the aesthetics are more pronounced and like more identifiable i'll be able to figure out but yeah this is like first style and then let's see if i can figure it out i think that's second style or third style see it's literally just like a little mini history lesson on like all the 2dx versions and then let's see seven or six 
Hmm. No, wait, this is definitely six. Or actually, it might be seven. Ah, I'm so bad at figuring out the early ones. And this one. Oh, Jewel Shower. So, yep. And then this is eighth. Yep. Then this is definitely ninth style. Alright, this is definitely tenth style. So, I figured it out. And 2DX Red, because, of course, all this red. And then Happy Sky. And even a callback to the four cardinal, like, gods. And 2DX Gold. DJ Troopers. There was a reason I showed all those, like, videos earlier. Besides me fangirling. And Empress! Oh, this is 2008. And then Sirius, Resort Anthem, Linsel, and Tricoda. Then we get the Spada, and Pendul. Ah, oh, that transition was so cool. And then it doesn't include Copula because that was the current version that this song is from. Ah, oh, God, I love songs that call back to like 2DX history. No! I literally don't care! Gotham, Gotham City sucks and no one should live there because people die. Oh god, this song. I knew I had to include one song. So, Superstar Mitsuru is um, an alias of Tag, who's like an artist who... Actually, he left Konami, like... I think he left Konami, like, late last year, but... So, unfortunately, we probably won't see too much of Mitsuru again. So this song is technically a collab between two of his aliases and usually for a superstar Mitsuru he puts on this like dumb outfit with like a bunch of like sparkles and glasses and things like that. And this video is literally just like him, he's in both of these outfits and just him dancing with himself. Like it is extremely dorky and dumb. Like he's supposed to be like this cool suave like Bishonen guy. Like, he's literally, like, there was a comet coming towards the Earth, and he, like, punched a comet to save us all. Even though it was very close to us, and high key, it should have destroyed a bunch of stuff when it was very nearby. But we're not going to worry about that. He saved Earth. Superstar Mitsuru saved Earth, and we just didn't know about it. And yes, like I said, this is him. This is Tag as well. It's just him dancing with himself as two of his aliases. Uh, what a cool guy, am I right? And then they're both doing their own thing, but hold on a second. And then they see each other, they're like, hey, you're cool, a pretty cool dancer. You're cool too. Yeah, let's team up. <laughs> but these dumbasses. God. But at least they're having a good time. I'm, I'm just glad they're having fun. <laughs> just shake it. <laughs> Early swag. Exactly. <laughs> Maximum swag reached. It's all no limit, like it refers to the amount of swag. And then they went to space. They died on their way back to their home planet. Oh, the, man, they still hadn't implemented cute anime pictures yet. Because, yeah, for those who are new, like in Beatmania 2DX, when you get above a um, double A, or a triple A, you get like a cute anime picture, usually. Sometimes they didn't implement it because they were uh, various reasons. It's moving right now. <laughs> oh, Copula. So Copula's extra stage system was called Season Line because yeah, each of these songs represent a different season. And my favorite song out of all of this Season Line songs is Azizai, Azizai, which I think means Hydrangea in Japanese. And like, it kills this little frog robot. It's this, he's so cute. And yeah, this song represents the um, rainy season in Japan, which I feel like it's actually around this time or like it's about to start in April or so. So what a timely song. Oh, uh, look at that. Oh, I love, it. that robot has a name. I forgot it though. 
Ah, I love when like the like scratches are in time with like the video too. Like legit, like I said, like I made AMVs in like the past, so this is just like going full on with my AMV maker brain of like, yes, this timing is so good and like these cuts are so good. Oh, I forgot the name of this little cute robot, but I know his description says like he likes training for martial arts and like he likes to fight. I feel like the rainy season would be beautiful. It would be like I genuinely love the rain. I just get caught in it too much. But yeah, like seeing the rain from the inside where you're warm and cozy, like that's perfectly fine for me. And hydrangeas really are like so they're one of my favorite flowers. My favorite flower is the red spider lily, which again is like one of those flowers that like if you watch anime and things concerning death happen a lot, you'll see that flower a lot, but I do like hydrangeas. Hydrangea, hydrangea, blah, blah, blah. English hard. God, I love just like the rain sounds at the end of the song too. It's like absolutely beautiful. Love this song. Hey, look, it's the cute anime girls I promised. Yeah, they really cool. Let's see. Oh, yeah, the Cannonballers interface. Like I said, Cannonballers was the very first version that I got to play myself, and I didn't just get to watch videos for it. Oh, yeah, Konami has a system, like, a um, currency called Pasili, which is, like... It enables you to, if you pay with Passily instead of like regular game credits at the arcade, then you're able to access like some bonus content. So that's just like an incentive for people to use Passily instead. And you can also like load your Passily car like at any time, so you don't even have to go to like the counter. Oh yeah, I think they added this with Cannonballers too. It's like um, a lot of people when uploading videos for 2DX like to have videos of like their hands, like doing the notes and like playing and everything. So, Konami was like, hey, let's actually implement that in the game itself. So, yeah, you can choose whether or not you want to have, like, your hands shown on the screen. So, like, it'll, it's able to um, capture your hand shots at the same time. And you can choose where you want to put it. Like, you don't have to put it to where it covers the video as well. Yeah, for those who don't know, like, this is what a Bitmania 2DX arcade cabinet looks like, at least from the top down. So, yeah, you have, like, seven keys and you have, like, a turntable and... You can actually play doubles plays, which means you would play like with both sides, like both turntables and both keys at this exact same time. I am, that's very difficult though, and I'm not able to do that. And yeah, the red line corresponds to the turntable and the black and white keys correspond to the black and white keys on the play field. And it also like um, shows you the title of the song scrolling across that little LED area right there. But sometimes whenever there's like really cool songs or like super epic songs, they include um, special text or something. Like it'll say something different besides the title of the song. I will never understand how folks go that fast. Practice, because the timing window for Beatmania 2DX is actually like very tough and it's tougher than most rhythm games. Like I think you only have like a few frames in order to um, get like the highest score you can for an individual note, which is like, so yeah, this, there's, um, there's poor, there's good, there's regular great, and then there are flashing grades. And yeah, flashing grades basically means, yeah, like it says right now, like, like they're showing right now, like the grades are kind of rainbowish, but then there's like a regular version of great where like the, um, color of it's just kind of like a yellow. And you can like customize like yeah you can add something called a pacemaker at the side where it'll show you like um where exactly you need to be in order to get a triple a or a double a or an a on the song and it'll show you like the um score you had the previous time you played the song and yeah again triple a you get a cool anime picture And yes, there are so many options you could choose that, like, I'm going to go ahead and admit, it's not going to make sense for most people unless you're, like, super into it. So let's see. And then let's go to the end here. Yumi Mago! Look at her! Oh, I love you! 
Oh, also fun fact, so the announcer voice for Cannonballers. Oh yeah, the game over it says thank you for driving. Ha ha ha. God, that menu music, I miss it so much. But yeah, the announcer for Cannonballers is actually the announcer of um the 2DX tournaments, like that they hold at the um Konami Arcade Championships every year. Like he's actually like the announcer for the 2DX tournament. So I like I really love that detail of like them getting the announcer for like the 2DX version that's based around racing and everything. Ah, it's so good. Also, one of my favorite songs from Cannonballers, of course by Lapis, because he's one of my favorite artists. But the song of this video just goes so hard. I don't want Spotify Premium! Leave me alone, YouTube ads! Also, can you not freeze? Thank you very much. Okay, everything seems to be good now. This song is so stylish, and it's just like... Question, do the tournament still go on? They took a break for one year due to COVID, and I think... They had one in the... I think they had one last month, actually. Um, yeah, they had one, yeah, they had one last month because I remember I watched the Sound Voltex in the 2DX um, tournament. So, yeah, I think they didn't have one last year, but this is the first year. I think this is the, this year was the 10th year that they've done these tournaments. And you can, um, they have the archive, like they usually sh live stream the tournaments and you can watch the archives on YouTube. And, you know, I might go on a brief Sound Voltex tangent. You know what, yeah, let's go for it because sound voltex like is really even though i'm not super into sound voltex like the game itself i do watch the tournaments because what they do for sound voltex is like the final song like the final two competitors have to play to win is a brand new composition that like they have never no one has heard before and like they basically have to sight read the song and that's so cruel but also like they're like during the song like they usually have like something cool happen during it so let me see if i can pull one up or a couple because there's like three specific examples that i'm looking for let's see ah! oh cool Twenty-one thousand people are watching the um hollow stars like watch a star thing oh i'm so happy yes all right so um, What's it called? Is it E? Yes! Triple A, yes! No, not yet! Not rooted yet! Oh! My favorite, like, yeah, so I mentioned in, like, um, so this is Rudage's opening, and the song again is called Rudage, it's just spelled with the infinity song, dying. And yeah, literally, like, these are, um, all callbacks to, like, early 2DX, like, promotional images and, like, the aesthetics and stuff. Yeah, Trip the Deep was the catchphrase for 4th style? Yeah, this is 5th style. Yep, yeah, 2DX for the new century was the catchphrase. Yep, 6th style, the primary vivid 2DX. And 7th style. Yeah, Silica and Erica, they're twins, but apparently they were like separated soon after birth and they don't know they're twins. And Iraha, yes, here's the youngest of the Umagiri sisters. And in 10th style, which of course, like, because it's the 10th version, it had everyone on it. Well, all the 2DX characters at the time. 2DX Red, oh, Sakura is like very sad, like. Yeah, she died when she was young and she just apparently haunts an arcade and sometimes she possesses um i think she possesses iraha's body whenever she wants to like go up get someone Higami, my girl! god and then dj troopers god post-apocalyptic wasteland <laughs> and 2dx empress and yep there's amato the oldest ah oh, i think her name is Saya? I forget. She's also like the older sister of another 2DX character. And 2DX Sirius. Resort Anthem. Again, like I said, bikinis, beach episode. And then we end with Vinsel.
Your art is pretty good. Yes, like I said, Goli, like, Goli Matsumoto does the art for, most of the art for 2DX. But, I can't believe, like, hold on, there's, like, some stuff I wanted to include. Uh, hold on. I will keep that open, and then, oh, I just thought, and then it forgot it left. Oh, hold on. I mean, all right, and then if I remember it, I'll pull it back up. Yeah, this is Rudage's interface. Let me skip to. Oh yeah, entering. Oh yeah, if you like incorrectly enter your e amusement pass too many times, it cancels it. And it's just like you gotta do it again. Now enter it right. And there you go. Then you gotta agree to sell your soul. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, and since this is this for user's first time accessing Rootage, they're gonna have to do the data succession process, which it's a bit tedious. So yeah, they asked, hey, you wanna progress your DJ name? Oh, oh yeah, do you wanna like, it asked, do you wanna um, change your DJ name? And I always choose yes, even though most of the time I never wanna adjust it. Wah, stop. There we go. All right, and then let's just go ahead and skip. I don't want to. I don't want to dox them. Well, I mean they dox themselves because this video is widely available. Oh yeah, you choose what mode you want to do. Yeah, the step up, standard, class, free mode, premium free. Step up mode is basically kind of like a mode to teach you. Like yeah, it's literally just like to step up your um like the difficulty and get used to the game. And again, there's Pasali again, and yeah, you get bonus stuff if you use Pasali. And it's asked, do you want to go through the tutorial? And even though they said yes, I say no. So we're skipping it. And yep, there's the music select. And then let's see. Oh, let's start panel over. Whoa! Whoa, Rose! Whoa! Whoa! Wait, oh my god, it was only 30 minutes? Dang. Um, but hello, Rosebomb! Thank you for the raid! Hello, hello! My name is Zora Takachi. I'm an octopus switch VTuber who loves rhythm games and is spinning this stream just fangirling about like interfaces and background animations for the um, rhythm game Beat Mania 2DX, which is my favorite rhythm game of all time. <gasps> hello, Rosebomb! How are you? How was your stream? Ah, uh, welcome, raiders! Also, yes, I'm Rose, like, as you can probably tell, like, Rose Mom designed me and I look so beautiful. Thank you, Rose Mom. She made me all wiggly and beautiful and I love my design. <laughs> Hello, my daughter. Hello, Mom. Ah. God, so many raids today. Like, God, I'm just thriving today. Oh my God. Oh, oh. What was I talking about? <laughs> oh, God. I was, yeah, I was talking about rhythm games and stuff. So, yeah, Rudy just my very favorite version of Big Mania 2DX. It's super cool. Love the aesthetic. I love that it's a callback to like previous versions of uh, Beat Mania 2DX. So, E. And this is one of my favorite songs. Like, this song is weird. This song is very difficult. And yeah, speaking of weird, like the way you pronounce it is weird because it's actually pronounced um, Kuro, like the word black in Japanese. And this song, yeah, it's very difficult. Like, there's so many weird musical things and, like, in terms of the composition that it does. But when you pass the song, it feels so good. And also another fun fact about Beat Mania 2DX, if the another charts, which are, like, again, the, like, highest slash second highest difficulty of songs, like, if the song's another is too difficult, they will wait to implement it until, like, I think two weeks after the game has come out. So yeah, the, like, the game is just like, hey, this song's too difficult. We're going to give you a week or two to get adjusted to what we got now, and then we're going to give you the, like, really hard stuff. And yes, this song is composed by Sasuke UK, which is, um... I believe he did Vocaloid compositions. Also, I know I got a notification for... Some notification went off. I'm just trying to find it. I know, like, it seems like Twitch has been having problems with some, like, notifications of either followers or subscribers or stuff, because I've seen this happen on other people's streams, too, so... I don't know, I'll check into that, but... 
It might have been... No, I think the notification for the raid went off, so... I have no idea what's going on with Twitch. Um... And yeah, sometimes the videos have a story, but I can't figure them out because I feel like I'm too small brain. And I feel like there's supposed to be some story between these two birds, but I'm like, I'm just like, hey, visuals are pretty. The song is pretty too. I hope those birds are okay. No, shut up. No free advertisements on my stream. You gotta pay me. There we go. <laughs> okay, so this song um, is called Gene, and this song, so in 2DX Rootage, like, there were a few songs that are s supposed to, like, have the feel of previous versions, because, again, Rootage is the version that was made for the 20th anniversary of Beatmania 2DX, so in the anniversary version, we gotta, like, look back on our past and think about that. So, yeah, Gene has, like, a lot of callbacks to, like, Happy Skies videos and, like, all the, um... And yeah, like, and another thing about Happy Sky, Imagine Tentacle stepping, slapping away ads on stream. I can't wait, I would slap the shit out of Google. Like, fuck them. Ah, uh, but, let's see. Oh yeah, Gene is also like a reference in and of itself, so. There are some songs in Beatmania 2DX where, depending on what difficulty you choose, like, the song will be different. And, um, there's a song in 2DX Happy Sky Sky called Scripted Connection, where if you combine the normal version, the hyper version, and the another version, you get the full version of the song. So Gene did the exact same thing where um, it took the normal version, if you take the normal version, the hyper version, the another version, you get the whole entire song all in one. So someone edited in like the normal hyper and another versions to make one complete video. Oh, now I remember seeing one of the references to the other songs. Reminded me. So yeah, I did mention there are a set of like 2DX characters who like are just just appear in like all the well, not all like they appear mostly in the advertising for the games, and they also appear in other stuff. Um, and there is a set of videos by this group called Terra who used to be with Konami, but then they left like, a few years back. And all the videos like portray those characters in kind of like an anime scenario. And yep, now we've entered the hyper version. Let's see, this is a level 10, so now nah, I'm not able to do this. Let's see, okay, so I can add them. Uh let's see. Oh, uh, where is it? Come on, where is it? I'm just gonna add... Oh, that's what I meant to add, too. Oh, Captivate! Oh my god, I love Captivate. And yeah, all the Captivate series of songs were, um... They took the openings of previous, like, whatever the previous version of 2DX was, and then they usually got turned into, like, a series of songs called Captivate. And uh, there's Captivate, Juka, Sabaki, um, what's the third one? Juka, Sabaki, forgot the last one, but then there's Captivate 2, um, which I also forgot about. Let's see. Uh, honestly, I like the another version. So yeah, we've entered another version of Gene. I and mean, there's so much I can talk about. Hold on. Oh, there's so much I want to add. That's what it was. All right, and then I'll add. I'll add that song. I can't believe I forgot about these songs. I'm so mad at myself.
right at that. And then, oh god, because there's like a bunch of, like, there's two series of songs that I can't believe I forgot. And I meant to include those, so I'm gonna include those right now. Hold on. Whoa! Hello! Thank you! Welcome to the Stuff Look House Ghost Trifesta! Welcome, welcome! And yes, I know I have chat on um 10 minute following mode right now, so yeah, I'm realizing you guys couldn't have gone like vampire read or anything. So I'm just like, now I feel bad, but oh man, I meant to um but yes, I know you guys are here and I'm super happy you guys are here. Oh and then yeah, like I said, since another is like the ending of Gene, like it kinda has like a concluding like like the actual ending to the full song here. Oh man, I, I feel like this song made me like appreciate Happy Sky more than I did because Happy Sky used to be one of my least favorite versions and like, but now I'm just like, you know what? I like Happy Sky. Like, it's pretty all right. Oh, but then my favorite of like the 2DX like retrospective songs is called End Intelligence because it represents one of my favorite versions, Empress, and it's done by one of my favorite artists, La P. So I feel like this song is made specifically for me. This song is made for me! And the video has callbacks to um, some of the videos from 2DX Empress as well. And yeah, like the, um, each version of 2DX kind of has like a theme for like what type of sound it should have. And I think Empress's theme was like house music, so yeah, house, techno, things like that. Uh, so many pretty things going on. Oh yeah, I forgot it does the thing where it like switches ears on you. Oh man, there's another series of songs I wanted to talk about too. Should I make that another stream? No. Let's see. No, I'm just gonna like look at that playlist. I'm just gonna like look at that one. I'm not gonna add each or I could actually. Hold on. Uh god, what order do I wanna do it? And then that one. Oh yeah, like the um pink and green butterflies I think represent like the two characters who were introduced in Empress Amato and I believe her name is Saya. Or Sayo. So yeah, that's in intelligence. I don't know why it's called that though. Is it supposed to be like Empress in intelligence? I don't know. And yeah, like I mentioned, Rootage is kind of like the opening song for 2DX Rootage, and it called back to like all the early 2DX um, aesthetics. Go over with Glare, Rootage 26 is the song that represents Rootage itself, and it's kind of like the um, ending song for it. And like it calls back to like some of the later 2DX um, promotional art and stuff like that. Like, yeah, literally, like, yeah, this is the promotional art for 2DX Tricolo. And I think the theme of that version was like, well, besides three color, was like school AU basically. Because, yeah, they're all in like school outfits. But it also has a callback to early versions. Yeah, Beat Mania 2DX, Substream, Second Style, Third Style, Fourth Style, Fifth Style, Sixth Style, Seventh, Eighth, Ninth, Tenth. 11, well, 2DX Red, Happy Sky, Distorted, 2DX Gold, DJ Troopers, Empress, Sirius, Resort Anthem, and Mental. And then, yep, September 19th, 2012 was 2DX Tricoda. November 13th was, um, yep, September 17th, yeah. These dates are kind of all over the place. November 11th was Copula, a week before my birthday. And Shinobas, Cannonballers, November 7th was 
Rudage! See, uh, the theme of Rudage, like, well, besides the anniversary stuff, was kind of steampunk. Yeah, everyone has, like, clocks and, like, kind of steampunk type gear on them. God, Goldie's art looks so good. And then that's like a peek at the new 2DX logo that's used in like the new um, arcade cabinets. And then we're on a heroic verse in um, Valkyrias, which is a song you'll recognize during my breaks, um, is a song that's kind of like the opening like theme song of heroic verse. Don't know who this girl's name is, like what this girl's name is though. But I think she's meant to be like a Valkyrie or kind of like a modern day Valkyrie or something like that. Let's see. Alright. And I think I got that. That's fine. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Then I'll grab that. Then... Alright, I think I got comprehensive play this now. Things I'm gonna talk about. And then that. Let's see. Oh yeah, and then, yep. Okay. <sighs> Our brain's doing like five million things at once. So yeah, this one Valkyrie girl has to like destroy this thing that's probably gonna destroy the city. I love the red claws she got going on though. Oh yeah, it's yeah. This song's called Valkyrious Birth of a Hero because if you say heroic verse in a like weird way, heroic vasu kind of sounds like heroic birth. Thank you for the head pats, Dez. Ah, hold on. I knew it's not going correctly. Oh, wait, can I just... Oh! I can do it like this. So the head pats should work now. Ah, thank you. Wait, hold on. Did it work? There we go. Thank you. You also might recognize this song. Like, I think it's not in my current break playlist, but... It was in my break playlist a long ago, like a little while ago. And I love the fact that like DD Mouse, who you might recognize, I think, yeah, he did the background music for um, Wonder Egg Priority around this time as well. So if you watch Wonder Egg Priority, also I highly recommend it, but like totally look up content warnings because it does touch on like a lot of like very um, like serious topics. And also don't watch the last three episodes because just it's one of those anime where it starts out wonderful but then it just ends up like crashing and burning but yeah this is dd mouse's first song in beatmania 2dx and he gets like a custom video one of the best videos of heroic verse in general and i just love that for him uh i'm like yes thrive girl and yeah many people have like consider this video to be about like um yeah this girl basically gave a love note to like her crush and she got rejected and it's basically about like learning to love yourself before like loving anyone else at least that's what some most people interpret it as but this video is just so pretty to look at and yeah it's about basically repairing your own heart Oh, glad she's happy. 
Like, yes, smile. Ah, oh, love the video. Literally warms my heart every time I see it. Oh yeah, and if you don't get a double A, you get like little chibi versions of whoever the mascot characters of each 2DX game are. So yeah, the, the girl's name is Himmel, and I forget what the guy's name is. But he's the guy who you saw like the Gundam outfit that I know Echo talked about earlier on. And then we're moving over to Bistrover. Fun fact about this song. So yeah, this is a remix of the 2DX Red ending, which it initially was... um. Like, the ver playable version of this song is called Captivate Juka, which I mentioned it before. So as a nod to that, the genre of this song is Captivate. And this video also has, like, some callbacks. Well, not some. It has a lot of callbacks to 2DX Red. Like, it literally starts out. Oh yeah, I forgot, like, red apparently stands for something, but it, it's different each time you see it. Because sometimes, like, yeah, right here it says 2DX Revolutionary Evolution Developed Version. But then it st sometimes it stands for Reactionary Energetic Diversification. I don't know, it just stands for different things depending on, like, what they think sounds cooler at the time. It's also very nice that they made, like, a video for this song, too, because for a lot of the songs that are remixes of older songs, they don't usually remix them, but considering that this is a remix of, like, one of the endings to, like, one of the more popular 2DX versions, yeah, I guess they were like, yeah, we gotta do it. Ah, uh, those notes. dun 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 God, like just those notes like evoke so many emotions. Oh my god, it's almost been two hours of straight of rhythm game fangirling. So I might take a break and then like depending on where I am in this playlist that I have. Let's see. Oh yep! Okay, yep, we're exactly where I think we should be. So we'll go over the 2DX cast hour like stuff. Oh, and then it does a thank you for playing at the end once you finish the song. So cute. Don't care! Don't care! What are these? Is this anime? Is it no anime on my stream, even though I'm technically anime? So Cast Hour is like the 29th version of Beatmania 2DX, and it's the current version that's out. So let us... Or we can just wait patiently. So, a thing that they implemented with Bistro, no, Heroic Verse, you can finally choose what language you want the menus to be in. You can choose between Japanese, Korean, or English. So, yes, there is finally English language support for arcade versions of Beatmania 2DX. I'm still super excited about this, even though it's been years since it has been implemented. And there are, like, if you go to a round one and play Beatmania 2DX, like, some of them will be still connected to the Japanese servers, but they finally have dedicated, like, English servers, which means that we're finally able to access, like, some of the things, like, um... I mentioned you're only able to access some songs with, by using Passily to, um... pay for your arcade credits, and that enables you to access some of the extra stage and things like that. For the longest time, even though there were 2DX arcade cabinets in the United States, we still weren't able to access all that stuff because we couldn't pay with Passily because Round 1 didn't have that enabled. But with the addition of English servers, we are finally able to access all the extra stages and basically everything that, like, Japanese players can access. So it is a very good time to be a, like, 2DX arcade player right now. Did they just go through the interface super quickly? Hold on. Oh yeah, I guess they did. I was too busy talking with fangirling that they did go through the interface like super quickly. Oh yeah, and like the th um, theme around cast hour is streaming! That's right, they made a whole entire 2DX version based around streaming. So some of the extra stage songs, like um, I, I have to show one of the songs, but yeah, when you choose the um, whatever mode you want to choose, it's like you're choosing like what channel you want to watch, like what YouTube channel or stream you want to watch. 
So now that we've reached past hour, I wanna... Hold on. There's one particular song. Hope Is it in the suggestions? If not, I'll find it. All right, doesn't look like it's there, unfortunately. So I will look it up myself on here. Okay, for chorus K. Chorus K is how to make a toge core. So yeah, chorus K is how to make a toge core is like literally, it's in the format as if he was making like a YouTube video about how to make like rhythm game music. It's such a fun video. And yeah, the genre is literally Channel K, like Chorus K YouTube channel. So he just goes like, honestly, I wish there were more songs like this that just like took advantage of the um, theme of this version of the game. Because I think it would be really entertaining. And yeah, he has a little like, like bigger version of him. And like the little timer at the end of like at the bottom of the video literally tells you like hey this is how much time you have left in the video or like the song kicks snares close hats open hats rides bass symbols and then you combine the elements Uh, I love that like you actually control like the sound effects and the music in the background. So if you miss a note, like something will not play. Melodies. Uh, I don't like. I don't know exactly what he's saying, but I can get the. I, I get the point basically. But yes, yeah. He's literally just teaching you like how to make a rhythm game song. All right, and then we got the melody down. All right, we're almost done. So, and this this is all the elements combined together. how you make a rhythm game song okay oh yeah and he basically at the end said hey remember to like and subscribe and i'm just like there is no like and subscribe button on the arcade machine i can't like and subscribe what do i do <laughs> Also, thank you for the posture check. Actually, I think now is a good time because, yeah, we went through all the stuff that I had initially had in mind for, like, my rhythm game review. But there's some stuff that I added because there are two or, I guess, three series of songs that have, like, corresponding videos that are anime AF that I would love to, like, go over. So I'm going to take a cute break. Not a cute break. What What did I just say? Ugh. I'm going to take a break to get my brain in the, like, right manner and get some water and calm down for a bit and also relax so i recommend you guys to do the same because oh my god it's been nearly two hours and straight of me fangirling about rhythm game so we're going to take a break from all this rhythm game music by making you guys listen to more rhythm game music cute break <laughs> no i'm not cute stop calling me cute <laughs>
Hello, Super Levels! So that's jamming. That's what this whole stream has been, just like me jamming and stuff. So, like I mentioned, well, at first I mentioned there were three different um, series of songs I wanted to go over. I was wrong. <laughs> also, thank you for the welcome back. So, um, I guess I'll go, we'll take a pre brief tangent over to Sound Voltex Land. Because, yeah, Sound Voltex is another series that's made by Konami or, like, it's under the Bamani series of um, rhythm games that they have. And for every Konami Arcade Championship, as I mentioned, like, I mentioned before, but I know there have been, like, raiders and, like, there are some new people here. So, yeah, for every, like, final, um, final round of the championship for Sound Voltex, there's a new song. They've, no one has ever heard it before. They basically have to sight read this chart. And there's usually some shenanigans that happen during the song that, like, cause, like, things to happen to the play field. So, even though I'm not a big Sound Voltex person, it's a fun game. It's just... There's a lot, and I haven't had many opportunities to play it. Um, but yeah, and like they usually make a huge deal out of like um, the new song, like that gets unveiled. And 
Like, I still watch the Sound Voltex Championships because, like, seeing the new song is super hype. And unfortunately, like, due to COVID regulations, like, this past, for the 10th year, they weren't able to have a live crowd. But, like, hearing the crowd's reactions to everything happening, too, is also a super hype version. Like, not super hype version, super hype thing that happens. So, yeah, literally, they're like, this is the last boss. And, like, there's usually a special, like, graphic that appears. Oh, yeah, it's the name of the artist. So, yeah, this song is called... I think it's pronounced Chroma? Like, it's not pronounced I. It's like, I think a Greek, it's supposed to be a Greek letter. And yeah, I think level 20 is like the max level that you can, um, that is available at Sound Voltex. So, yeah, very threatening. Also, you're able to choose, like, um, a character who's kind of like your guide in the game. So, yeah, they have, like, custom guides for themselves, too. I'm gonna skip to the actual song. And again, like I said, like, things usually happen, like, in the final song, like, no one has no idea what's gonna happen to the playfield, so, yeah. So, like, when you're playing, you're just, like, constantly looking, like, what the fuck's gonna happen? That is amazing, though. Yeah, like I said, like, these, like, these two players are sight-reading this. This is the first time they've heard this song. So they're having to do this without any, like, knowing anything about this song. Like, what's gonna happen? And, like, there is, um... I do this too, but there are ways that, like, you could kind of feel how a song is gonna go. Like, whether it's gonna go back to, like, the bridge or, like, whatever part of a song. Like, normally you're able to do that, but... High key, like, the purpose of the song is to be difficult as fuck. Like, there are songs that, in rhythm games, that are made to sound pretty and, like, be actual songs. It didn't... Sometimes there are songs that are specifically composed just to be hard as balls. God. Also, yeah, she's one of the mascots for um, Sound Voltex. Her name is Grace. There are multiple, like, Sound Voltex characters as well, and, like, most of the time they appear in, like, these boss songs. Also, yeah, the special thing is about to happen soon. Yep, it goes blank, like the screen just fucks off. And then like she gets the whole universe around her and the play field gets even smaller. God! Seeing everyone's reaction to that is so funny. God, I cannot... Hey, remember when I said I could see the notes? Yeah, I legit can't see the notes here. God! Yeah! God, I hate Did, Hold on, let me see the score. Let me see the score. Okay, they both completed it. Okay. Wait, I don't think... Hold on. Let me see their scores. Okay, they both passed the song. I know there was one year where, like, one of the finalists didn't even, like, get in, like, the pass area. Like, because there's, like, a um, gauge. Like, you have to be 80% or above to technically pass the song. But the fact that they were still both able to get triple A's, like, God. So that was from, like, the seventh Konami Arcade Championship. What? Oh, why are their eyes so freaking huge? Ah! Okay, so this is from the ninth Konami Arcade Championship. Crowds were still allowed. I think this is still before COVID, so, yeah. Yeah, yeah, this was still before COVID. Oh yeah, there's usually a theme for the boss songs too. Oh shit, someone's hacking the game! So the theme for like all the boss songs associated with um, the ninth Konami Arcade Championship were like... I think they were like Corruptions of Fairy Tales. And then she's supposed to be a corruption of Red Riding Hood. Like, basically like Red Riding Hood if she was possessed by the wolf or... Not a wolf, I think she's literally like... The lore for this song is like she's possessed by Satan, though, because of course, yeah, the song's called 666, so yeah, it makes sense.
I forget her name though, like she's also another Sound Voltex character. Let's see. Alright. I don't have to wait that long. Alright. Oh god, this song. So, this version, like, a Sound Voltex that they're using for the championship is called Vivid Wave, and like, they implemented live 2D in like the um, character avatars so they can actually like blink and like wave at you and do stuff. Live 2D will be implemented in the song in a very cool way that I love. Like, yeah. And it'll happen a little bit later, but you'll know when it happens. God. I want to miss Sound Voltex, it's a bit hard for me to follow. <laughs> oh, it looks like they have tournament up mode enabled, because yeah, it tells you like at the top of like each player's screen who's in first and second place. How's he in second place, but his like gauge is like he's actually able to pass the song. Like he's actually passing the song, but he's in second place. That makes no sense. Oh yeah, if you pay attention to like um the shape of the like little wavy things like are in a six, like there's the first six and then Hey look! She literally cut through the fucking like lane. And that's not the only trick she has up her sleeve. God I'm just like whoever made this, I'm like they have a little live 2D, I'm even more afraid. And then there's the second six. It's like watching two gods fight anime. You can't keep up the movements. Literally. And then the last six. So yeah, only mini passed. Like um. Tony Dan to play on the left, like, I don't think passed that song, so, yeah. And then, like, finally, like, the last thing I wanted to show in my Sound Voltex tangent is the song from this year's, like, Konami Arcade Championship. No, shut up! No, blah, 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 no, Disney, no, go away. And yeah, like, yeah, you could tell, like, COVID precautions are in place. Like, they literally have a screen between both players. Both players have masks. There's no crowd. And, like, two of the um, commentators, like, they have to have them over, like, Zoom instead of having them be here. So, yeah. Let me see. I'm going to just skip. Two, one, start off. Uh, the hype isn't as good even with the, with no audience. Oh shit, things are getting corrupted again. Whoa, that looks fun. <sighs> Lassus. So Lassus is another one of the mascots for Sound Voltex. Oh, but a, a, another thing I forgot to mention about Sound Voltex is they do like a lot of um, like fan things. Like they do a lot of like viewer contests where like um viewers can like design their own graphics for um the cards that you get in the game or like the um graphics for the songs or they can even compose their own songs sometimes and um enter them in the contest. So like a lot of viewer submitted things get implemented in the game. So yeah, this song is called Mission, but it's spelled with two X's instead of S because cool. Oh, I could turn this up a bit. And again, remember, last the last tournament they knew about Live 2D, so I was just like doing this live stream. I was just like, oh god, what's gonna happen to the screen? Ah, uh, should I wait a bit? No, it looks pretty fine. Hold on, I'll turn off annotations. I'll leave the quality at 1080. A game that like gets in touch with its community. 
Exactly! Like, those types of rhythm games are honestly, like, the best to me. And I love seeing, like, um, so many current Beatmania 2DX artists are, like, were fans of the original, like, games, so seeing them get to be in the, the modern games is nice. Oh, hey! Lassus, hey! What are you doing with those guns, huh? Let's see. Ah! Hey, what are you doing? Yeah, she literally shoots the screen! God, what a brat. Okay, she's doing fancy stuff in the background. Just don't shoot the screen again. That would be real pog. It's fully loaded. I don't know why it's like skipping like this. And yeah, she's shooting all across the screen. Again. She's even shooting like the viewer screen, which I love that detail too. Like she's not like, she's not satisfied with just like messing with the two people playing. She's messing with the viewers too. There's so much going on. Also, howdy Zora. Yeah. Hello! Yes, like I said, like me, this is literally just Zora fangirls about cool <laughs> rhythm game things. And yeah, like, how are you doing so? Oh, Hope you're doing okay. okay. But yeah, during like, um, I like during the um Konami Arcade Championships, like for the um Rhythm Game Sound Voltex, like they usually, for the final stage of the championships, they have the two finalists play a completely new song. They got to sight read it. There's also gimmicks that happen during the song. So like one time, like, a previous video I showed, like, literally, like, the screen went blank and, like, the play field was even smaller. The gimmick with this time was, like, she will, like, this character, Lassus, will, like, literally shoot at the screen. So, yeah, each year there's, like, a different gimmick and, like, different things happen. And I both feel bad, but also it's so cool watching, like, the um, finalists react and, like, see everything. So, yeah, that was real cool. Also, oh, I just realized I closed it. So yes, that was like the sound Voltex tangent for like today. But again, let's go back to Beatmania stuff. So yeah, I mentioned there was three different series of songs that I wanted to um, at least briefly touch on. So the first one was like, I think this is the earliest one. Again, like there's like literally tons of 2D Beatmania 2DX characters. And they usually get imp um, added to like videos of like them fighting in mech wars or whatever and yeah they literally look like the anime openings also let me turn that down holy crap like sometimes these videos take place in the future with mech sometimes they take place in the past with swords and stuff i've come to the conclusion that zora is either a fangirling rhythm games b zora's fangirl over new new Sanji guys or c zora's fangirling over new hollow stars guys yeah that's basically me <laughs> Oh, uh, that's like the epitome of Zora, just fangirling about either Niji or Hollow Stars guys or rhythm games. God, I really wish I actually did turn this into an anime or something though. Like these designs and like mech designs and stuff are like too good. And yeah, apparently the plot of them is like, so there's a group of 2DX characters who are kind of considered like Celica friend group who's like the pink hair girl and like she's kind of portrayed as the protagonist in these videos. And um, her twin sister Erica, that's not Celica, I, I realize there's another pink haired girl. And oh yeah, we'll see, yeah. I think it starts out, yeah, Celica, like that one. Yeah, and these are her group of friends who are portrayed as like the protagonists in these videos. And then there's like Erica's group, who's, yeah, this like kind of like white greenish haired girl. And like they're portrayed as like the antagonists. Oh, I wish they actually did something with these videos. Fun fact, I remember playing B Dance Dance Revolution and like the video froze at that part where like the um, Celica and Erica are just like spinning and things like that. So yeah, that was Doll. Like one of the, I think 
either one of the first or like earliest videos where like the 2DS cast is portrayed in like a war scenario. And yeah, like they were they were mostly um portrayed in this war setting with like songs that were made by the group Terra, which was um comprised of Naoki Maeda, who you might know like made, he made like a bunch of the early Dance Dance Revolution songs in um June. I forget her full name. I think her name is Junko. I forgot. But yeah, both of them left Konami and like they now work at Konami. Not, not Konami. They now work at Capcom because like um they collaborated together again i don't think they collaborated under the oh wait no they did collaborate under the alias of terra like they composed a song for um cross beats which was like the rhythm game that naoki was in charge of at capcom but unfortunately that series has like come to an end like a couple of years back oh yeah this setting is different i mean there are still swords and like robots and stuff but i think this takes place in like the american west for some reason and yeah for some reason like that guy sent um this character her name is Sugaru back to the past I don't know and yeah I guess this is one of those cases where either like she sees all these people um as her closest friends and they might look different IRL or maybe it's one of those cases where it's like Hey, she went back in time and for some reason all these people look like all her closest friends and something. I don't know. Heard American West and every neuron in my brain fired off like I was caught on. <laughs> yeah! Yo, you came just in time. Unfortunately, this is the only one that takes place like in the American West. Yeah, it seems like Sugaru finally like managed to go back to the future and like, well, not future, to present day. And reunite with her friend and then there are still many more videos in like this Terra series but these are the main ones I wanted to focus on because these are like the most popular ones so yeah we have Ray zero like Ray is zero in Japanese yep Silica and Erica are still fighting Yeah, this takes place in the future with mechs and stuff. I do like all their outfits though. These are such pretty like pieces of art. Yo, animation! God, those shoulder pads. She should enter like the NFL. <laughs> No, oh, this is so anime, it hurts. Oh, man. Seems like there's, like, shoulder pads equals sports chat. Woo! <laughs> God, these mechs are getting fucked up. And it looks like this is one of those scenarios where, like, whenever the mechs take damage, like, the user of it takes damage in the exact same spot. Or, like, in a similar way. Go of katana equals neuron activation. <laughs> it's not a katana, it's a lightsaber! Like, don't you see all these lightsabers? They're all glowy and shit. <laughs> okay, let me make sure. All right, and then the next series I want to talk about. So, these last two series I want to talk about are um, they're both made by the same composer, Tomosuke Funaki, but they're under two different aliases. So, the first one is like a series of songs under his Zetbok alias, which all these songs have videos in um. Well, not all the songs have videos, but all the, like, videos tell a larger story that has apparently concluded. And yeah, this, like, I forget the actual order. Well, there is an actual order that you're supposed to watch these videos in. I tried to emulate the order, but I might have got some stuff wrong. Like, this isn't the very first video in the series, but, like, it is, like, one of the things that, like, one of the inciting events because you at first you're like oh all these characters don't seem to be connected they are most certainly connected 
So yeah, blind souls, torn souls, hurt face. It's about two twins. Again, like they love the twin, like separated twins angle in Bamani. And yeah, like one of the twins is Matten, who's like raised to be a princess of a land, but she's basically being used like um, she's really being controlled by like people who are abusing like the common people and like basically it's just like the rich stay rich the poor stay poor and then her younger brother Knox is like a revolutionary who's trying to fight against like the um like kingdom and like fight for like the people who are being impoverished and treated mistreated and everything and yeah they don't know like they both like yeah they don't know either one exists I think Matt and yeah Matt and those Knox exist and um she wants to like reunite with him and talk to him again but Knox fucking hates her because of course she's like the symbol of like the mistreatment that all his friends are being like suffering through and like the people that have su died because of her technically separated twin story is pretty good it's a good trope to use So yeah, I think Knox was supposed to be a um, prince too, but for some reason, like he was taken away or like thrown away. And yeah, then they finally meet on the battlefield and yeah, things do not go well. Neither of them die, but yeah. So the next song, which it does have a tie of black blind justice is Apocalypse Dirge of Swans which takes place on um an abandoned island like so oh yeah i forgot to mention like um so there are like these jewels called the Rustachia, and like they're all embedded into specific swords matt and Knox have each have a Rustachia sword but the thing about them is they're cursed swords and like they can take control of your mind and cause you to murder and like the reason for that does get um explained but yeah, so Apocalypse takes place on an island. So this is interesting a bit off topic. It seems that Twitch you can search for people viewing a person's stream. You cannot search among the people you follow. Huh. A lot of weird stuff has been going on with Twitch lately. Like, I have no idea what they are doing. Like, I don't think anyone has any idea except for the people working there. Maybe not even them. <laughs> uh, but yeah, um, what's her name? Malhood, I think. Is, her, is that her name? Mal? No, Hannes. Hannes is a girl who was like kind of considered like um the chosen one on like this island of people because like oh like um the sword like she was able to like get a sword from the fountain and like people are like oh she must be the chosen one god chose her we should listen to what she says but then like um the sword unfortunately is a Rastachio sword and it starts telling her, hey, humanity kind of sucks. Like, they kill each other a lot. They don't deserve to live and stuff. So, Hannes is like, hey, you know what? You're right. I should totally kill everyone else on this island. So, that's what she does. So, yeah, she basically goes mad. Like, the sword corrupts her. And, like, she kills, like, literally everyone on the island. For some reason, they're not able to stop her. Either they don't stop her because, like, they call her she's God's chosen one so they're like oh maybe like God wants us to die and yep she like destroys everyone and she leaves the island thinking that she's like um that she's basically God's messenger And when, like, she eventually runs into Nox, who has apparently overthrown the, um, kingdom. And her and Nox get together and cause chaos. Because both of them are possessed by the Restachio Sword. Hydrate. Ah, thank you for the hydrate. Actually, I'm going to take a brief tangent. Before we get to Tari Panthere. Do I have... I don't have Restachio. Please be in the re related videos. If not, I can find it myself. Oh, there it is. I might just have to go back to this, but whatever. So, Restachia is technically the start of all of this. It's kind of like Please. the prelude. So like, it gives you a glimpse of the entire story without you even knowing that you're seeing, like, most of the story, or at least the beginning of the story. So, it's literally just a prelude to the chaos, basically. 
So yeah, there's Hannah's. Knox. Shamshir. And Matten. And yeah, Shamshir was like, um, she also was like the daughter of a general in her country. Um, and she gets a Rastasia sword and like, she basically becomes like the star of the battlefield. Like, she's like, um, she basically is one of those characters who like dances, like who attacks through like dance moves and like her fighting style is like a dancing style. And yeah, she also does the similar thing of like, well, first like, her father like i think yeah legitimately her father or her mom i think it was her mom who's the queen of the country was like yo my daughter's evil let's like kill her so yeah she was gonna be like um she was gonna have the guillotine like how like she was gonna like have her head chopped off in front of like her country and but then the Rastasia like possesses like it causes some shenanigans to happen the Rastasia like electrocutes the guards who are like holding the sword and like it basically flies towards her and Shimshir also kills everyone in her country. So yeah, that sword is not good news. And yeah, there are eight different piece eight different pieces of Rastasia, like eight different swords are created and given to eight different um countries. But the Rastasia are actually pieces of this girl named Larissia. Like she's basically controlling everything and her whole deal is she wants to cause war. She just wants to cause chaos. And yeah, like I mentioned, like this is literally like an abridged telling of the story. Like if you slow down a bit, you can see. Like, yeah, they try to kill Shamshir, but then Shamshir burns down her country, kills everyone. Then there's a scientist named um, Noah. Who like, um, it's kind of like the amalgamation of a society of, um people like literally for some reason some society of people like we're like hey the smart thing to do is if we combine ourselves into one person like that's like the um only way we can like become even smarter and he creates like two like offspring of himself and he basically gets like um knowledge or whatever he knows what he needs to do but then whenever he was i think he was about to stop larissia but then larissia tells shamshir hey kill no noah so yeah she kills noah but it turns out that like two creatures or like two offsprings of himself that he created were Matt and Anox. So yeah, Matt and Anox fight. Like Nox becomes king. And um Matt and I think is like held prisoner. Because for some reason, like even like most likely like there's still a semblance of Nox inside of him that prevents him from killing Matt. And, and then yeah, Hannes arrives. But, yeah, Hannes is like gift from god and then she destroys her kingdom yep and yeah hannah's at least she it seems like she realizes like the chaos she's caused these are all teenagers too like these teenagers gotta like go through wars and getting corrupted by a sword and stuff well, except for Shamshir. Shamshir's actual adult. Oh yeah, yeah, this is Nox. Like, he choose, has to choose between Matten and Hannes, and he chooses Hannes. And then, it turns out they fall in love, but unfortunately, I think they create, like, a dictatorship. And I think the land is even worse under their rule. And yeah, here's all of them, like, with their fighting styles of how they use their swords. But at least these are all like the people who are like chosen or I guess cursed by Rastasia. So yep. They are in deep shit. Like that's like the kindest way to put it. It's like, yeah, they are in trouble. Uh let's see. I'll do this again. And then I'll get rid of that. That's pretty insane. Yep. <laughs> like I said, it's like... They actually did make an anime out of Shamshir Dance, because that's technically, like, the first real chapter. 
So there is a Shamshir dance anime. It's not good, which is why they didn't make any out of the other chapters. But hecky, they should because these are like they're all so good. Like all these songs are like so good, and it's totally deserving of like a way to like show the story. So yeah, finally we're back at our playlist, and we're at Tari Panthera, which tells the story of a person who was not chosen by the Restachio Sword. So there's this um, group of people called, I think they're called like the star people or something like that. And I think they're only supposed to be either 10 or 12 of them alive at one time. So every couple of years, whenever a new star, child of the star is born, like the oldest one has to die. And that's just a way for nature to stay in harmony. like. And yeah, all of these beings are like genderless, like they don't identify as male, female, they just exist and thrive and they, yeah. But then some humans come in and they interrupt the ceremony where like, um, Malhood, that's what her name is, Malhood. Yeah, this is Malhood. Like the girl with like the pink and white like hair. Well, not the girl, like the being with the pink and white hair. So yeah, some humans came in, they saw the ceremony, they saw someone being drowned and they were like oh shit we gotta like save them and then the rest of the star people are kind of just like um you weren't supposed to do that and yeah it's supposed to be like some big celebration whenever like one of them has to sacrifice themselves yep there's malhood And yeah, eventually, like, she's taking the, um, the city called Masanoa. Basically, she's taken away from, like, um, the island where her and, like, well, not her, where th they lived with, like, the rest of their family. And Malhut realizes, yo, like, I was, um, saved, so I'm gonna use my abilities to, like, set the world right and stuff. Because Malhut realizes, like, oh, I might have to, like, I have to go against the Restacia and Larissia. So, yeah, Malhut, it's basically, like, the Epic of Zetbok is kind of like a, um, tale of, like, nature versus technology. Because Larissia represents technology and, like, variation of, like, life. And Malhut represents, like kind of just the stagnation of life but also nature and like and it tries to like it tries to do a thing where like neither side is like like perfectly good or perfectly evil but it's kind of very evident like who is evil yes also this is still Malhut she like I mean they just have a new outfit and here's Larissia basically the final boss and yeah like I said Larissia she just wants to cause chaos that's all she wants yeah, her aesthetic is just like pink and black and very futuristic. And yeah, Raison de Terre is kind of like a um like how Rustachia was like the prelude to the entire epic. Like Raison de Terre is like a midpoint, recapping everything that's kind of happened so far. Oh yeah, Larissia had a creator, like, I forgot the name of her creator. But like, he also like, appears in some of her flashbacks and stuff, but Larissia I think is technically an, um, artificial intelligence. Like, she's not a real girl, she's technically just like, a being made to cause chaos. And yep, all the people who, like, whose lives Larissia has ruined. And yeah, they're literally all crying out, hey, help us. Like, I think that's literally what the lyrics are, like, help us, please save us. And Larissia, of course, is like, hell no, am I letting any of you go. And yeah, finally, Malhut and Larissia beat in battle. So, fun fact, Malhut loses. 
like Malhut loses their body and um becomes a being called um Amelia, and then I think when um Malhut becomes Amelia, um they finally beat Larissa and free everyone. Oh yeah, and then this is Larissa's video. So fun fact about this specific upload of this video, this. Like the YouTube channel that this is on is actually like I used to be Miss Bamani 1287. <laughs> so like I abandoned this YouTube account because I think I got too many strikes and I was close to having it all be deleted and I was like I don't want this to be deleted so I just stopped uploading on it. So yes, this used to be me. Uh let's see. And yeah, I remember asking like, hey, if anyone has any information about the story, can you please help? Um, so yeah, okay, so people are like, Larissa, the creative Larissa had a daughter who looked like her, and people are, and like, so that might be like the memories of that daughter might be implanted in Larissa. But yeah, Miss Bavani 1287 used to be me. Did I manage to upload this in good quality? Nope, 360p. Ugh. There is an HD version of this video around here somewhere. I just wanted to talk about the fact that this YouTube user was me. But yeah, this video is basically just detailing like Larissa doing her thing, being a computer program. Like, causing chaos. E. That's Larissa. And yeah, I think her most of her emotions are just, she's just bored with humanity. And she's just like, lol, I'm gonna make humanity destroy each other because that seems to be what humanity is best at. And yeah, that's Larissa. Oh, and yeah, this song's literally called Larissa Primal Logic. So yeah, she thinks what she's doing is logical. It is not. But yeah, those are most of the important videos for like the epic Zepbok. But like I said, I highly recommend you guys like. Because there's like way more than like I'm detailing in like there's way more about this story that like there's so many good things about it. All right, so the next, or yeah, the last series of songs I wanted to go over are, again, like I mentioned, like this is also by Tomosuke Funaki, who, like I said, was, he is Zetbok. He made, or I don't know if he wrote the story, but he definitely composed the songs. Um, But yeah, there's another series, like he has an alias called Kuroneko Dungeon, and it's about like um these girls who basically have bonds with dragons and like them getting hunted. So yeah, this song is called Ryu to Shoujo to Decoherence. So yeah, the girl, no, the dragon, the girl, and Decoherence. And all the titles of the song in this series have like something to do with like mathematical concepts, I believe. And even though this song um, itself, like the song itself was the third song to be composed under the Kuroneko Dungeon alias. Like in terms of the videos, this song is like the first like chronologically. And um, this girl's name is Maud, and yeah, like if you play poppin' music, you might recognize her. Like she, she appears in her friend. Um, I think her friend's name is Lilia. Up here. And then yeah, we finally get to the origins of Maud. So Maud was just a normal girl in Japan, but then she like hears something calling to her. And she like, I'm guessing she sees like that number on her hand. Like Tomosuke seems to really like involving like math, mathematical concepts and things in his stories. Or like the, in his like videos. So yeah, she sees a dragon. It turns out like she's actually connected to this dragon. And it's actually Maud. 
and yeah, she assumes bonds to this dragon. And I think that's what the lock on her um, neck means. And I don't think there's like actual like materials like, um, cause yeah, there were like um, art books and stuff associated with the Epic of Zetbok. I don't think there's any like art books or like actual written materials for this saga, but I think you're supposed to infer everything about it just from the videos. So yeah, like I said, that's the third song, but that was like the first video chronologically. So this is the second song, I believe, to come out in the saga. And this is also the second video. And this song is like, oh, Lilize, that's her name. So the second dragon girl is, her name is Lilize. And then Lilize to like, to I think Fire Dragon and Leidaten, oh, Leviathan. Make sure audio's still good. Ah! Uh, no, stop! So yeah, Lilizay's thing is like, she's angry all the time. Yeah, anger, hatred, suspicion, desolation, discouragement. So yeah, in the past, like, apparently there was this guy who tried to kill her. And like her and Maud were together. And I think she was trapped somewhere and like this guy killed tried to kill her. She didn't die luckily. And now she wants a revenge against Maud because I think she blames Maud for like her being entrapped. And yeah, Ma's just like, yo, I don't want to fight. And yeah, like, Lilize is just like, answer me. Like, why won't you, like, apologize? And then, oh no, what happened? There's a sword. Who had a sword in the flashbacks? So... This song is, um, I forget what it's, it's Lindworm. Like I just call it Lindworm. Um, cause that's like the concept that's associated with this song. So this is the very first song to be, um, released under Tomosuke's Kuroneko Dungeon alias. But the video is chronologically the third video. Which I think is like a very interesting order. So yeah, it's the guy from the past who like tried to kill the two dragon girls, Maud and Lilize. And it seems like the, their past is finally caught up to both of them. I don't know what the binary says in the background. And yeah, Maud basically now has to save Lilize because um, the guy, I think, killed her or did something to her to trap her again. And yeah, Maud is basically now going after this guy. Like, basically, Maud's fucking pissed. Because Ma's just like, you kill the only other person who c I could identify with. Yeah, I believed her. She believed me too. Against, I wanted to help him. I couldn't help him. So both Ma and her dragon are like, sad that they couldn't help their friends. And Ma basically decides like, it's left ambiguous whether or not she kills him or not. But what does happen though is that Ma did manage to save Lilize. And then we get to the, like at least the last song so far. There might be more. Like we don't know yet. But yeah, this is the la latest song. This is both a brand new song. Like it's the latest song in the latest video. So finally, like the saga could truly continue. And it also has like a brief, like kind of callback to all the other videos, like Linworm. 
then Decoherence, and Leviathan. So yeah, back where we were left off, Ma uh, not Maud, Lulu Zay was being tortured. But luckily Maud saved her! And now Maud's trying to escape. So yeah, the dragon girls are finally back together. Question, when she lets her out, does she still want to kill her? No, I think they reconciled and they were finally like realizing the truth of what happened when the guy came in and tried to kill Lilize. Well, not tried to, like he, well, no, yeah, tried to because yeah, Maud was still able to save her from being entrapped again. So yeah, it seems like they're finally friends again and like, yeah. But I don't like this though, like, usually when characters start wearing, like, clothes that look like they came out of the Catholic Church, that usually means they've turned evil and like, yeah, their faces don't look too happy. So I think some shit's going down between them and... I think maybe they both are, like, have unleashed something bad? Cause yeah, those eyes do not look good. And that's the last song in, like, the saga so far. So, yeah! Alright, so let's see. Do I still have stuff I want to- There is still stuff I want to talk about. Oh yeah, I forgot to add this video to like an appropriate place in the playlist, so... Yeah, this is the boss song of 2DX Sirius. It's called Alma Guest. And I just love like the way this song sounds. And also it involves a mecha. So, yeah. For any mech fans around here. Actually, no. Let's include, hold on, 2DX, because I can't believe I didn't get to touch on this, talk about this. Tenku no Yoake. Make sure, you know, yeah, this is fine. So, many of 2DX, I think, implemented something around Linsel, where, like, you literally have to fight a boss as you play. Like, the better that you do in a song, the more damage you do against the boss. And depending on what your grade is at the end, determines on whether or not you've defeated that boss or not. So the final boss for Linsel was Suvalia, who looks like they are this giant mech. But if you miss a note, you'll find out what's actually inside this mech. Of course, it sounds super heavenly. Because, yeah, fun fact about, like, the, um, so in Linsel, like, all the bosses were based around the seven deadly sins. And then, like, you had to go against Satan as the final boss. But then the actual final, final boss was an angel all along. So, yeah, it's kind of like one of those cases where, like, oh, snap, the angel was actually evil the whole time. Let's see. I hate being like this, but I'm like, miss a note. Miss a note so we can see who's actually inside the mech. They missed a note, but it must have been like... Sometimes it forgives you if you miss a note. That's pretty cool. Because like there's so many cool things about this game. Oh, they missed a note. Yep, I think we'll finally see who's inside the mech. Oh wait, no, they changed forms. Oh yeah, yeah, you have like, your little character, like player character at the side. You can actually customize their hair, their clothes, like... Of course, like, the more you play, the more points you get, get to, like, customize your character more and more. So, yeah. Because I haven't played in a while, I haven't gotten to customize mine that much. So, I think if you beat this boss, like... I think you see who's inside of it. God. You're beating a, like, mech, a mech angel with an ice cream, like, with a popsicle. I love that. And it's working, too! But yeah, if you miss a note, like, the mech will actually attack you, but since this person is, like, doing really, really well, like, they're not getting attacked. They're doing the attacking. Oh 
Oh, yep, yep, they destroyed the mech, and it turns out there's an anime girl inside the whole time. So that's the true form of Sevilia. So yeah, you defeat her, and she basically fucks off. Until one of the later games where she comes back and is like, hey, fuck you. Like, she wants revenge on you, basically. And then... I gotta, of course, play Sky High, which is kind of a successor. Let's see. Yeah, Sky High actually originated in a game called Beat Stream. Um, but there was only two versions of that game before Konami discontinued it. But a nice thing that Konami did do was, like, when they were discontinuing the series, they uploaded all the videos from the game to their official YouTube channel. So, yeah, Sky High is kind of a sequel. Like, basically, Sevilla has been defeated by no-name player character a bunch of times. Like, the press is basically bad-mouthing her, and she's like, wow, she's a fucking weak angel. She sucks, and she's had to do press conferences, and... She's basically taking a break from being evil. And there's actually another 2DX character with her. I think she was also another boss. And yeah, like, the other character is like, Hey, they think that, like, weird, like, stone thing is you. And she's like, I'm not that ugly. What the fuck is their problem? And yeah, she destroys the stone idol. And she's like, I'm God. Don't you see the halo? And yeah, the villager is just like, Okay, so yeah, I guess you are God. So yeah, there is this mountain, and then there's this demon, and then he like blasted a bunch of fire in it, and it's killing all of our crops and like all of our animals, and now we don't know what we're gonna do. We can't eat. The civilian's like, you know what? I'll take on your stupid like, yeah, I'll take on um, like this demon. So yeah, they're, they're just fighting. Still fighting. Yeah, Sevilla is just like, oh wow, wow, I'm so bored. Okay. Yep. Alright. Fine. Yep. And the villager girl is just like, can it stop? And yeah, she finally comes in and she's like, what the fuck are you doing? I actually get serious about this. And then the other demon's like, she can't defeat me, she's like a below me, and then she's like, Actually, Sevilla used to be a demon, and she was like the highest rank demon. Yes, sleep King Sky High Sevilla. So, yeah, Sevilla's just like, I'm gonna take this other mountain and I'm plug it in, and you're going to leave. And Sevilla's just like, oh, fine, I guess I'll help you, Babakas. And she finally gets good press! See what happens, like, when you do good, you get, like, good press about you in um, newspapers and junk. So Sevilla's finally turned around, which I find like to be like, that's such a cute video and I'm like, I actually love when like they use their characters more than once because that's just like really cute to me and like, that adds more layers and depth to them and I'm like, oh, I love Sevilla. she's adorable. Alright, do I have anything else that I wanted to show? Oh, I do! Well, besides me fangirling about 2D, I mean, Hollow Stars, you know what, actually let's do that now. So, like... There are new Hollow Stars. <laughs> there are new Hollow Stars. They announced a, like um fourth gen, fourth gen uh today. So let's see. Let me. Oh, he for me, my love. I love you. I love. I love you so much. But like, I still got one last thing I wanted to mention. Oh my god, am I getting hiccups? Oh my god, my mentions. Whoa, 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 whoa. Ooh. Ooh, holy crap. Why? Okay, uh, sorry, I have a lot of, like, things, like, I tried to go on Twitter to be like, okay, I gotta go back to be stuff. Oh, where? Where are the boys? Where are the boys? We're gonna watch the trailer. Cause, ah! Hold on. Cause they released a version of it in English. We're not, in right schedule Zora, high school. Oh, love, like, shorts of those, like, Attack of Time, but they were in high school. Yeah, I love, like, stuff like that. I know a lot of people don't like, like, anime, like, the chibi anime thing, but high key, I'm a sucker for those things. So are you blowing up on Twitter? Apparently, I am! <laughs> oh, good, it's on dark mode. Good, 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 good. All right. So, yeah, Hollow Stars has a new unit called Uproar! And, like, um... Let's see, so it's like the fourth gen, and they have like descriptions of everyone. I gotta make sure, oh wait, I gotta control audio. 
and then advanced audio and then monitor and output and make sure all the tracks are available so you guys can actually hear okay TV visuals are appearing at Holostar's booth at Hololive Super Expo 2022. So yes, there's an event going on right now called Hololive Super Expo where they're basically like, they have booths and things available for like Holostar's as well as Hololive and like all their branches, like English, Indonesia, and like the JP branch. And like they have a Holostar booth. Uh, Interesting that they're like advertising them as a new unit instead of saying like the words new generation like I've noticed like some things about um Hololive recently like about the language that they're using like for example like the Auditions for what people are calling Holostars EN they haven't used the term Holostars They're using the term Hololive English male audition so I'm just like huh there's a life-size girl for a charity auction. Whoever gets that will be an absolute chat. Wait, it's for a charity auction? I saw the life-size girl. I didn't know it was for charity. Yo, oh my god. I wonder who's going to get that. Oh my god. God, I hope they do something like this in like English-speaking countries or like overseas or something because I would love to have been able to go to this. Uh, Mina Serio. So, Rio, like, apparently he died and he still wanted to be an an idol and I'm just like oh my god that backstory is already full of angst oh it says his birthday his birthday is 726 okay god I need to look at their birthdays yeah I like Rio and, and like Gamma most so far I really hope Gamma has like dumbass energy like people keep saying like he's so red it hurts my eyes and I'm like yeah I love it I love that so much oh my god I'm so excited and like they haven't announced when they're gonna debut but yeah so yeah started out with yatogami fuma who his oshi mark is a raccoon i believe so his description is i love sweet treats i love games i love to chat a fixer who loves human pastimes is also a bit of a clean freak started uproar upon receiving an odd job request so the fact that he says that he, a fixer who loves human pastimes i'm like he's not human he's He's gonna have something up with him. I can tell. Let's see. His designs. Okay. I, I love all their designs, Haiki. Like, ah, uh, but like, let's see. Oh god, I can't wait to see what they're like. Like, I have no idea what they're gonna be like because their descriptions might say one thing, and then as VTuber code, like, they could be like a super powerful god, but then they could be like an absolute dumbass when playing Minecraft. <laughs> let's see. It's Sugi Uyu. I have. What is that Oshi mark? I gotta look up looking closer on my own time so the phantom thief infatuated with beauty rumor has it there are treasures only an idol can obtain he's becoming an idol to get his hands on the, these treasures oh uh, let's see i love the owl i actually didn't notice that there was an owl because like the white background with him having so much white in his design like kind of made things like hard to notice at first glance but when i looked at it in more detail i was like oh, it's a burb it's a burb Oh, it's so cute. Phantom Thief, but he's wearing such loud ass clothing, even though he's wearing all white. Like, uh, you would be super noticeable. Like, you're a bad thief. And then Hizaki Gamma. Yeah, I love him. A party animal ma manga artist who also runs an underground business. I wonder what type of business that is. He used to think manga was the awesomest, but he realized that singing and dancing idols are also awesome. He's aiming to be, to be the most awesome. Awesome, awesome, awesome. God, I'm getting like flashbacks to like. The dark days when I was like into Hitalia and like how much like everyone talked about Prussia being awesome like, and stuff and I'm just like Ugh. God I hate that that's reminding me of that God his outfit it's fucking like I just realized his sleeve like his right sleeve is like up and oh my God okay he doesn't have horror gloves like I consider horror gloves to be Sheehan's gloves where like it doesn't go like fully up his wrist like it kind of like goes around like the, his palm so he has regular gloves so it's not completely horror gloves even though I'm pretty sure people are still going to call them horror gloves my god it's, it's not that much red it's more black like it's like more subtle it's just his tie is a fucking mess like god this dumbass boy I love him <laughs> Oh, I love her so much. And then Rio, Rio, sweet baby. Oh my God, it's such it's so sad. 
Yo, like, what if this was the outfit he was wearing when he died, though? Like, I swear, like, if he has, like, ripped knees and stuff, like, what if he died, like, in a car crash or something? Like, God, man, I'm just doing so bad. <laughs> a ghost who passed away while still determined to be an idol. He spent his early ghost days lazing around until, upon Fuma's invitation, he decided to aim to be an idol once again. He can't deal with ghosts and scary things, himself included. I mean, excluded. <laughs> He's scared of himself. <laughs> He's like, I'm not a ghost, shut up. You just put his hand through his, like, body. God, what if that's actually, like, not part of the, the design of his shirt? Like, what if that's actually, like, his, like, body or, so, like, his, like, bones and stuff? And you could just see his, like, rib cage. God, oh, I can't wait to see, like, them actually move and everything. And, like, what other fancy tricks they got. Because, of course, since it's Hollow Live, like, they're going to, like, pay, like, so much for, like, the rigging and everything. Oh, I can't wait to see how they move and what they're like. Ah, I'm so hyped. Ah. And then another thing I wanted to talk about at the expo is, let's see. Yeah, so they have um cosplay like um displays. I'd rather not think about that. What? Why don't you want to? It's not that bad. Like, can't be that bad. Like, it's just like, like all the ghost VTubers, like, that's like a co topic we have to talk about. So, yeah, another thing I wanted to talk about is they have cosplay versions of, like, everyone's outfits available on display. So, yeah, they have, like, ho like cosplay versions of everyone's outfits. I hate Robudu's green pants because Haiki in the art, like, in his art, I, I thought they were black. And if they're supposed to be green, then I'd rather they just be black. Because, God, that green is so loud, it doesn't... Like, I don't know if it's the lighting or what, but, man. Also, I want to know what Ogo's cup size is. I want to know what cup size he wears for his, like, weird bra thing that he wears. Let's see. And then, I think, I thought it was in the replies. Maybe it's not. Maybe it's a different tweet. Okay, I will find the tweet I'm thinking of. Let's see. Oh, here it is. Someone has, like, um up-close pictures of all of the outfits come on let's go up and then oh it is the thread or at least i thought it was hold on and then yeah it's this user what can you show the rest can you show the rest i guess not twitter on its bs again that's fine it's fine everyone's fine okay so we're just gonna do it this way. We're just gonna put the link in here, and then yeah. So yeah, there's like versions of everyone's outfits. So also, if there's any cosplayers, like this is good reference material to see how this would like look IRL. Here's Miyavi's outfit, Izuru's outfit. God, those short shorts. God, he has shorter shorts than me. I don't even have shorts that short. Damn, man. I'm not jealous. Then an Adu Papa's outfit. God. These all look so cool. I want to see these so bad. And Rika's outfit. Let's see. It looks like... I didn't realize that, like, the white part of his outfit was just, like, a normal sweater. Like, I don't know why. It just didn't process it to me. And then... Hurry up and load. Let's see, I should probably. Mm, I don't like there just being silence in the background, so we're gonna add media, background music. It's probably gonna be super loud. Okay, good, it's not super loud. Yay! So, yeah, then we got Estelle's outfit. I wish they were like actually to scale. Like, I get they're probably like this size to show off. Um, the details and everything but it would be really funny if like everything was to scale and like estelle and like ezer's outfits were like super tiny and then we got Tima's outfit and his like butt cape let's see come on god all that white that would get so dirty so quickly he's a knight too like that what doesn't make sense to me like he's a knight so he's like fighting monsters and stuff and then we got Winning Sun's outfit, but that's not a winning... The top is a winning outfit. It's just the bottom. Like, I do not like that green. <laughs> I really don't. Like, I feel like that shouldn't be green. I feel like that should be black. Or, like, a dark, like, blue. Or, like, basically matching his vest. Like, I don't know why they made it green. Also, yes, that is a, um... 
what is it i had a tiger like or yeah no yeah i know my animals hold on yes that is like a white tiger or like zebra print like belt that he has on him which god you, he never shows like the bottom or he kind of does black goes with everything it does which is why i don't know why i don't know why i made it green it's so ugly i don't like it well that green not like this green this green's fine like if like only there was like ogre's body attached to it also yeah she ends out fit they actually like made it like god that fluffy coat i want that coat so bad i want the whole outfit can i just get the whole outfit <laughs> looks so comfy and then finally we have ogre's outfit and apparently he said that there's like retro games in his little like um pockets so like there's like a game gear and game boy advance and like there's games in there so i wonder if they actually put game boy advance stuff in there that would be really funny detail but no one would be able to see it because no one can really touch it because yeah like they shouldn't be able to oh oh they have stars collection stuff on there okay so yeah like another thing that they did is like um so hollow stars has a short anime like called stars collection which are literally just like small skits where like they're in like a little like hideout and like various things happen each day and they recreated the set of stars collection so yeah like they have the little couch the bar like the upstairs area their shitty fridge like so many things happen with that shitty fridge like i love that they recreated it too and like they made it look just as garbage as it looks like in the anime and the fire extinguisher and yeah the bar with like nothing in it I feel like there's more stuff in the bar in the anime than they have like on display here. Which is hilarious, like to me. Like, yeah, there's like barely anything there. Like, this is so sad. And then let's see. What else do they got? Oh! They have a I haven't seen this yet. Okay, so they have like um something for uproar. Like they have CDs for everyone. Cute! Oh, uh, then it's like the tallest, uh, oh, more hollow stars stuff. Oh my god, the threatening. Wait, hold on. Let me click on that. God, there's so much stuff. Oh my god. <laughs> they, like, so there's also a ha an app called Hololy, like H O L O L Y. It can also be R Y, depending on like how it's spelled. That lets you take like AR photos of like um, using Hololive JP members and Holostars members because they added them and they like did a, they must have taken a photo of us still kicking the fridge and Enrico playing guitar. Oh my God! They took a photo of Oga doing like in the very first episode. Oga does like a cabin a cabin on against like the wall to like show how sexy his voice is, but he's like saying it to no one and it just shows him like looking at the wall oh my god i love god i wish i was here i wish i was there so bad it looks like they have cardboard standees of the other hollow stars members hold on is there music to go with this okay no i thought it was gonna be like a dun 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 Oh god, those green pants. Are they sparkly? Are those sparkly green green pants? Hold on. Are these pants fucking sparkling? What the fuck? I feel so bad. Yo, he is like Robert is still like he just recovered from COVID. Yago just broke the bottle to start the event. Yo! Oh my god. Ah! Oh, and then they have like outfits for like all the Hololive girls, like IRL outfits. Oh, they even have like the new ones. Oh, and then they have like for um, they have Ollie's outfit too. Oh, it's so cute. And Muna, Yofi. Uh, I forget who like the sixth gen girls are. Oh, and then they have like, they even have Hollow Ian like IRL outfits. Oh man, I want these so bad. Well, except the like. I can't rock like um Kiara's outfit. Absolutely not. I wanna let's see, Watson. Girl's outfit just looks comfy. Like I just saw people like at the last anime convention I went to just like wearing girls outfit just like regularly. Oh god, do they have Iris's outfit? 
god serious crony hold on i want to see iris do you have iris's outfit mume Huckles, babe, Asia, rat. God, I love that. Wait, did they actually make them to scale? What? Like, wait, because I forgot Miyabi is actually kind of tall. Did they not have Iris's outfit? Hold on. Did they not? I guess not. I'm not seeing it. Iris's outfit's too OP. <laughs> Man. Oh, they have drinks too! <laughs> oh, this looks like so much fun. I hope they do this overseas one day. Oh my god! Man, that's enough VTuber fangirling. And also, yeah, I could tell my voice is starting to get weird. So, I'm gonna go. We're gonna go back to like one final thing with like rhythm game fangirling. But hold on, let me grab this right stuff. Go here, browser, interact. There we go. So yeah, we got one more thing I wanted to review or like look at like as kind of like a little final thing for rhythm game stuff. And so let's see if I can find it. Ah, uh, so many sources. Here it is. See, I'm gonna have to do the reload thing again. So whenever you like miss or like you do badly in a song, the fail screen appears in Beatmania 2DX, and it wouldn't be like a Beatmania 2DX game if they didn't customize the like way the fail screens look. So we are gonna like as the final thing I figured like as a conclusion to me fangirling about rhythm game is looking at the fail screen history. Which luckily is just like the like a little one minute video. And like I said, I'll share this playlist of like rhythm game fangirly stuff after the stream too. In case you want a fangirl, like, and relive the memories. See, so yeah, a six down eighth style, like, they use the same fail screen. I love how abrupt it is. Like, as soon as you, like, your grade, like, goes to zero, it's just like, nope, you're done. And yeah, knife style through distorted, like, they use the same fail screen. There's just different colors to reflect the aesthetic. But 2DS Gold is when they start doing, like, custom fail screens. It's just like, oh, I failed, but at least it looks pretty. The 2DX Empress one kind of looks like a tramp stamp. Ah, the serious one. Also, let me go back. God, Alma guess this chart is so awful. The Resort Anthem. Yeah, unfortunately, there's not good quality videos for some of these fail screens. <laughs> Scream. And then Spada, Pendul. And Copula. Yeah, like. Man, I do not know what that says. Too much kanji. Oh, yeah, the like Cannonballer stage fail screen makes it look like you like crashed or something. You're too terrible. Close immediately. No time for your reaction. <laughs> the guy just like the white face. And then Infinitas. Nope, shut up. No, Annoying Orange is not allowed on this channel. Hell no, I don't care if people are like, he was the first VTuber. Fuck off! No one, like, that opinion does not get to be said on this channel. And that is most certainly an opinion. It is not fact. It will never be fact. And if you think it's fact, then you're wrong. You are totally wrong. Hold on, no. I'm gonna make this even better. Hold on. If you, like, if you thought it was right, then... You're wrong. You're absolutely wrong. You're an idiot. Don't you dare say that on my stream. <laughs> okay. So with that out of the way, thank you for joining me for the Zora fangirling three hour fangirl-a-thon, whatever I want to call it, about rhythm games and hollow stars and all the wonderful things that happen. Like I said, this stream was legit just me being hype and talking about things I love, which I love dramatic zoom yeah i know i'm so happy i managed to implement that oh man so let's see who is streaming right now <gasps> ty is streaming right now so yes tayo devil like you could say like taco raid when you get to um her chat but yes tayo is another good friend of mine 
also in the Hollow Stars. She's wonderful. She's playing Don't Starve Together, it seems like, with um, some other peeps that she knows. So, yeah, I'm going to go and send you guys to Ty right now, but I'm going to go to the ending screen, but do not go away just yet. Like, please make sure you stay. Feel free to stay Taco Raid. And also, just thank you guys for, like, st staying here the whole time while I just fangirl about things that I love. Like, legitimately, it makes me so happy to know people actually want to listen to me, like, talk about dumb things that I love. So thank you guys so much for your time. And, like, even if you were lurking here, like, thank you so, so much. It's your streams or I'll catch you later. Oh, thank you so. Thank you guys for stopping by. Oh, I had such a fun time. I don't want this to end, but like I said, I'm gonna like go ahead and spread the love to Ty. Like I know I got rated twice today, and also yeah, let me before I forget. Like yeah, there is some stuff I gotta talk about. So hold on. Um, there's a lot that happened today. So I know um from like the collab that I did for Monster Hunter Frontier. Like thank you um. And I know there are also other people too. Like, so thank you, Maple QB, Songer TM, and um, Serena Somerset um, for the follows. Because I think you guys came from the Monster Hunter collab. Thanks for the stream showing me for some Beat Mania. You're welcome. I'm always happy to show Beat Mania. Let's see. And I know today, um, Nicol Nicoletto457. Thank you for the follow. Thank you, Elaine Main Cow, for the um, raid and host. Thank you, Buffy Mark, for the follow. Thank you, ZX Gaming, for the follow. Like, also, let me just... Nah, I'm not gonna, because then I have to read just some stuff. Um, thank you, Rose Mom, for the raid and host. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you, Ghost Trifesta, for the follow. And Okay, yep, that's everyone. And also, for those who, like, don't know, I am a Mosaic Hughes Rising Star member, um, which is, like, a group of indie, independent VTubers associated with, or affiliated with Mosaic Hughes. And as a part of that, I am also affiliated with Kozuguru, which is, like, an online, like, anime shop. Like, they have, like, if there's a figure you want to pre-order, definitely hit up Kozuguru. And they also have, like, plushies, especially, hold on, especially octopus plushies. Hint, <laughs> wink, wink, trying to wink, trying to wink. Wink. Yee. I'm bad at winking. <laughs> uh, but, yes, if you want to get some octopus plushies and have a little mini Zora, or if you are feeling like it, if you want to have a little mini Luna in your um, room or abode or hovel or wherever you are living right now, go to kozaguru.com slash rising star slash Zora to, like, get one of those. So those are a lot of alternating winks. I am wink challenged. I don't know. I'm bad at winking. And also, if you're, like, ever, like, wondering or, like, trying to remember the link, you can literally just type in exclamation point Kozu, and you get the whole little spiel right there. And also, if you're ordering multiple items, you can use code RS05SCP for 5% off your entire order. That's right. It's not just one item. You get 5% off your entire order. So go hit them up. You'll be supporting me, and you'll be getting some sweet anime figures, merch, plushies. They have T-shirts, too. They have, um... What else do they have? They have um, shirts. They have, like, stationery. They have, like, so much anime stuff. Like, legit, just, like, check them out, and you'll be going down a rabbit hole soon enough. And another thing, the last thing about I'm going to, like, advertise to you guys. So I am currently um, a contender for the Top VTuber Global Award, which is a contest being run by KuApp. So if you've ever, like, downloaded Gacha Games um, that are in, like, Japanese or other languages, you might have run across them or, like, heard of them. So, yeah, they are doing a contest where they have VTubers, like, they have Chinese VTubers, Japanese VTubers, and English-speaking VTubers. And, like, you can literally vote three times each day. If you share the post on either Facebook or Twitter, you get three extra votes, and you can, like, vote each day. So, yeah, you could type in exclamation point, I think it's exclamation point global. I have it set up. If not, no, I think it's exclamation point award. Oh, oh, I'm a go vote Zora. Let's go. <laughs> Thank you. But yeah, you can vote three times each day. And like, there are like different categories. Like, um, I know oh, there are different prizes and there are different categories for some of those prizes. And I know I'm in the category of like VTubers with less than um, 10,000 followers. And then there's a category for VTubers who have between 10,000 and 50,000. And then there's a category for VTubers who have over 50,000 followers. Like, and they get like their own prizes and stuff. And the top 30 um, voted VTubers get their own prizes. And also, you might not have heard this from me, but apparently, like, 
there are three different websites that you can vote on. So technically, like if you shared posts from all three different websites, you can, that's use your brains or use your brain. That is six, three, 18 votes a day. So I did not notice, but if you vote using the um, Japanese link and the Chinese link, that's even more votes for me. So I'm gonna, I need to like change the prompt for that. So let me go ahead and find the tweets for that. Ah, uh, ah, there it is. So yeah, here is the link to the Japanese tweet in voting site. Sadly, so seems the link is not working. Oh no, I'll fix that. Oh, I'll fix that. Um, so yeah, that's the Japanese link. This is the Chinese link. It doesn't ask you to log in. Like it's just bonus opportunities. Cause what they what they're going to do is they're going to combine the totals from like all three links, and like that's how they're going to get the final totals. And then here is the English link. Sorry, I gave you so many links like on there, but yeah, like you can like bookmark them or do whatever to like get votes. Actually, I'm gonna let's see if I can do this properly. Oh yeah, let's do it with this one. I'm actually gonna see if I can vote live on stream and take you through the process. So let's see. Omit the one where I think the command award was used and no problem. Oh yeah, no, yeah, I'll like go in and like I'll figure that stuff out and I'll change the link to um, be the modern one. So yeah, if you go to this tweet, you click on vote and get gotcha tickets, GP cards. If that doesn't work, then we're going to get mad at OBS because it works normally. It just seems like OBS doesn't want us to click on links in there. So then we're gonna go here, wait for it to load. So yes, and they're doing like um, VTuber introductions too. They're doing this in all the languages. Um, so yeah, they're doing this in Chinese. Like they translated my introduction to multiple languages. So yeah, they translated my intro to Chinese and Japanese. And like, yeah, they'll be posting like introductions of like all the VTubers who are competing. And there's a lot, like I know there's like, I recognize Isekai, but like there's plenty of VTubers who I haven't seen before like who i want to check out so yeah i'm currently in 33rd place so i'm almost at 30 but also remember to like i said they're going to be um tallying up the totals from like each one like the chinese japanese and english link so this like tally might not be completely accurate and again you can just click vote oh wait you got to sign in well i voted like i did and then if you want to get extra votes you can choose to share Again, but like it doesn't give you these options. It gives you the option between Facebook and Twitter to share. But if you click on me, you get a picture of me. Look at me. It's me. It's cute. And then I have lucky number 13. That's my ID, apparently. And yeah, my intro here is just like, hello there. I'm an octopus witch who loves music and video games. I like to hang out with my cephalo pals on stream and basically do whatever seems like fun. I hope you can join us. <laughs> oh, sorry, I said in that weird tone, but then. Let's see if I go to, is this the Japanese? No, that's the Japanese link. Cause I want to like show you guys what it looks like in Japanese. All right. I'm sorry, I'm not really tired yet. I'm like, what? God, I go down rabbit holes way too easily. And then we click here, hopefully it works. If it doesn't, then that sucks. It doesn't. OBS, what guy? Why? So then we're gonna go here. And then I'm gonna wait till it loads. And yeah, as you can tell, like I was 33 in the English list, but oh, I'm number 30 in Japanese. Yo, congrats me. Also, yeah, you see like each link is different. So I am ID number 51 in Japanese. So um, let's see, I tried practicing this, so. Let me see if I can read this. Minasan, oh yeah, Minasan, konnichiwa. Oh, no, no, no. Minasan, konnichiwa. Ongaku do game ga suki na tako no mojo, 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 mojo. I forgot. Ah, I'm bad at kanji. Oh yeah, cause jo, uh, yeah, mojo des. Live haishin de fan to isho ni sunde. Um, asobi. Wait, no. 
Hmm. I forgot what the kanji is. Koto. Yaru koto ga suki de. This. Um. Anata mo isho. Like. Um. Ah, I forgot. I'm going to get this right, but it. So yeah, voting is available until April 14th at um 10 a.m. Eastern time. So, like I said, you can vote three times each day, but. Since you can like vote on the Japanese, English, and Chinese version, that's technically twelve votes. You say Nihongo Jose, I'll study. I'll I'll literally do a study stream one day. Like between now and when voting ends, I'm going to do a Japanese studying stream. Like you can hold me to that. You can literally tag me and be like, "Hey Zor, when are you doing your studying stream?" And I'll be like, "And I I don't know." Uh, <laughs> I'll do it eventually, though. I'll do it. I promise I will do it. Like, hold me to that. Like, hold me accountable for that. But anyway, now that I've gotten all of, like, my spiels out of the way, I'm going to go rest my voice. I had a very good stream. I'm going to send you guys to Tile Devil, so feel free to type Taco Raid or, like, have octopus emojis or whatever you want to put in her chat just to let her know that you came from me. And I'll see you guys next time. Takatsu. Bye-bye. Luna says bye, too.